about to get started. Hold tight, folks. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, I think it's the right song. MIG going crazy.
She's going on the crazy. Hog. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. I was out on the hog earlier. You know what I'm saying? This is my uh, eclipse glasses. Still can't see. Actually, I found these, man. I forgot I had these. You know, I picked these up from the flea market a while ago. Didn't even know why I bought them. Don't even know why. Folks, welcome to the show. Hope everybody had a damn good day. I hope you all saw the eclipse. If you were in the eye, the the uh, the eye of the eclipse, I did fucking. I fell asleep. But that's not a sound. Neither is that. I fucking slept through it. I came home eleven o'clock on the fucking titty. Actually, no, that's the wrong time. I came home twelve o'clock. All right. I went into work extra early. I went in at the 1.40 in the morning. Okay, I'm hoping for the experience of a lifetime. You know, I come home, I'm like, oh, I can barely keep my eyes open. I'm tired as fuck. All right, so I lay down for like a couple minutes because I had a couple things to do around the neighborhood. You know, I was going to show you guys some new crackhead coverage of the lady in the back. Oh, my God. And then I was like, no. I think I'm I'm done with it. I'm done with showing her off. Okay, she doesn't get the she doesn't get the glow anymore. She doesn't get that shit. So I fall asleep. I, I lay down late tw thirty minutes before the big event. Okay, I've been prepping myself. I've been looking into the lore. Okay, the lore the the you know there's a lot of secrets of the eclipse. I've been uh, you know. You know, looking into like you know some of these some of these people out here, some of these conspiracy theorists have been running, running, fucking, uh, 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 you know, frantic with all the, all this shit. These people they get really scared when there's events happening around the world they don't understand, and uh, you know, people's minds get up all up in a frizzy. All right, their panties get frazzed up to shit. They start thinking the end of the world's coming, and I was like, hey man, why not? Why don't I get myself like in tune with the uh, the event? So I was like, what's the secret of the, you know, the first thing I asked YouTube about 20 minutes ago, I kind of did this after the event because I went outside. I went out fucking side. I woke up at 325. I went out there. I'm like, son of a bitch. And the first thing I see is the worst, you know, worse than seeing like, you know, something heading towards earth. I see my crackhead neighbor that lives in the back walking. She's got new, uh, they had to saw her feet off. So she's got these. Wooden, like, little, uh, you ever seen, like, a, like, a clod, like, or not, a clog, you know, something like Pinocchio would wear, or, like, you know, these people that dance on the stage with the metal on their, like, a clog. They gave her wooden clogs for feet. So, she, I heard her from a mile away. I could hear them motherfuckers are just tapping down the sidewalk. I look over. It's terrible. So, you know, I immediately went inside. I didn't even look. Okay, I had the glasses on and everything. I looked over. I saw her. I couldn't see her. I could hear her. I knew it was her. Just went inside. So I missed it. I missed, a, you know, something that would have been cool because of sleep. <coughs> what the fuck? I don't want that fucking sound. <laughs> so whatever. So I was like, fuck it. I'll just, you know, I went on Facebook. That's all I needed was Facebook. How many girls were over there posting up a storm? They're downtown Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, they're like, the eclipse is happening. It's looking like regular sunlight. I'm like, okay, should have known better. You know, I'd have a bad, you know, I'd have more of an experience of total darkness at night. A lot of people get really uh, all bothered over like fun things. Like, you know, my neighbor's always like, can't wait till it snows. I'm like, oh yeah, hope your car flips. You know, you're so excited for icy conditions. No, I'm just kidding. I would never, actually, she's. Probably outside doing the, the yard right now, so she just heard me. So I'll just tell her that wasn't me. Somebody else. Actually, I, you know, I just get a little bit pissy sometimes whenever it's the day before my birthday. I'm about to be 31 years old. I'm about to be 31. And, uh, you know, I'm not somebody, I'm not only one of these people out here. A lot of people get very, uh, you know, bothered whenever they're. Big day's coming, their birthday. I'm just pissed because I know I can't chow on fucking cake like I used to. I just want to come home tomorrow, eat a... You know, you know. I want to talk about disappointment. You know, I'm feeling the same way. I'm, I'm feeling disappointed. I can't come home and eat, like, all sorts of cheesecake. Digging in. Snorting lines of, uh, you know, Adderall. 
those were the days when I was younger. I used to just fucking, you know, welcome the thought of like going purple, my lips falling off from death. Okay, and my mom coming to my room, ants coming out of my eyes because I've been dead for so long. Spread the word. All right. No, but uh, so now I have nothing. I can just come home and smoke a couple cigarettes, a couple birthday bones. Uh, Nicole says, uh, you're younger than me. How old are you, Nicole? How old are you? Anywho, I missed that whole shit. I was, you know, I did a lot of did a lot of thinking today. So that's what I have in return of, uh, you know, instead of, you know, experiencing, you know, looking upward at the sky. But I did want to see some secrets of the eclipse. It brought me in a loophole, okay? I started looking at this, and I was like, well, I wonder what Big Nick of the Vlog Squad, okay, everybody's favorite munchkin, everybody's favorite midge, Big Nick... Okay, our religious, you know, warrior of 2024, our newly found religious, you know, zealot, you know, of the of the YouTube realm. Okay, it's a uh, and he's going to be giving us some, uh, you know, some. He's going to be preaching the gospel here later on in the video. We're going to be catching up with Big Nick. But I started looking at this, and this looked fun. This is, you know, because I was like, well, what's it about? What are they going to tell? What kind of like prophecies are people seeing? Okay, usually when there's an eclipse, people are fucking, you know, hell has taken over the world. There's double suns. Okay. You know, eclipse panic. There's a lot of shit like this. A lot of stuff like, you know, you look at one thing on Google. Next thing you know, there's every fucking thing that pops up on your feed is asteroids coming, the apocalypse, the Nibiru. So this is the first guy I clicked on. I was like, all right, here's a guideline to the solar eclipse day. The secret of 5th of April. 5th of April? What the fuck does that mean? That's not the right day. Here we go. Here's uh, Solar Eclipse in the End Times Biblical Prophecy. Solar Eclipse. Is this the end time prophecy? Okay, so the only thing that's like really ending is like, you know, his fucking 2020. Bro, look at this bullshit. Okay, this guy's got one. You know, I can't really tell which one's the normal look. You know, is this the regular eye or is this the one that had the problem or is this the problem, the fake eye, the synthetic eye? You know, what's what? Did solar eclipse happen when Jesus died? What about when Noah was preaching to the people in Nineveh? On April 8th, we're expecting a solar eclipse and there's been a lot of videos circulating about prophetic significance that it... Okay, that's enough. That's enough. All right, so that was a little bit of education on the eclipse. So let's head to the show. Let's make fun of some people. Let's talk some shit. I got, you know, thousands of things on my, you know, my, I have so many tabs pulled open. It's not even a fucking, you know, it's bullshit. It's unreal how many things I have pulled open. Now, I did want to show you guys Donald Trump went outside. He let his hams out. You know, he let his flanks, you know, walk across the, the you know, the Mar-a-Lago lot. Okay, to check out the solar eclipse. So let's see what Donald Trump, you know, Donald Trump went out there with his fucking, you know, walking backwards. I don't know if you guys know about Donald Trump. Okay, there's a lot of spookiness when it comes to Trump, man. But he went out there. He appeared. Appe he appeared confused too. And uh, Donald Trump. Let's see his like. You know. Let's see what it was like for him to witness. You know the eclipse. Now he was using his belt. You know the small the holes inside his belt. He was looking through those peekers. You know little peeps. The holes. Trump eclipse. Now, I know that on, I saw it on Twitter, but it was just, you know, when he looked up at the sun, it said Joe Biden or some shit, okay? Which was, you know, just a damn hoot. This isn't a video. I need to see Trump looking at the eclipse. Here it is. Look at him. This is what it looked like. Okay, I just have to wait one second, make sure this doesn't pop up. All right. So Trump, he decided to, you know, because a lot of times people think Trump and, uh, you know, Putin are like, you know, some of our superhumans of, you know, of the world. Okay. A lot of people think of God, you know, like Trump, like a godlike figure. Okay. You know, he stares directly at the solar eclipse without protective eyewear resurface video. So that's actually old. So this is an older video, but it's, you know, it's in the same vein and an eclipse is an eclipse. So let's see what it's like. Here he is checking out the sun. Now, I don't know if that's his wife. I'm not really sure but what Melina looks like. This is, a, you know, a solid 360p video. Let's up that call. Wow. Okay. 
Okay, that's cool. Anywho, besides all that, let's drop the fucking Eclipse talk. I'm so sick of it. We have some uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard coverage to hop into today. You know, I knew the time was coming. Gypsy Rose of, uh, you know, Rose Blanchard fame. You know, was in prison for helping out her, you know, helping out her lover kill her mother. Okay? She hid in the bathroom, said the alphabet backwards, closed her eyes in a fetal position, and then, uh, you know, allowed her, you know, this let the occurrence happen. Some would say... What the fuck is up, you guys? It's, you know, some would say she's a hero. Others would say, you know, off with her head. But um, she got out. There was a whole phenomenon. It was a lot like, you know, the 2020... 2020s phenomenon outside of the cough okay we had covid and we also had the tiger king that was you know it took over the world it took the world by storm a lot of people had uh you know they had the tiger king on their mind they were thinking about you know a lot of people were growing blonde mullets just you know in honor of the king you know i can't think of his name i think it's just tiger king i'm not sure if he has a real name or not okay anywho a lot of people's whole fucking life was taken over by the story of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, okay? Now, she's a fucking strange-looking specimen. If you've ever actually looked at her, she looks like a, like one of these like weasel people or some shit. I, I grew up, you know, going to the zoo as a kid or, you know, 4-H camp was something I didn't partake in. But they used to take, uh, you know, bring the animals to school and they would bring in marsupials. They'd bring in all sorts of creatures of the night, nocturnal beings. And, uh, you know, weasels were always the one thing that I was scared, you know, scared me half to death. There was no fucking had a snake's tail. Also had like, you know, a weasel snout and a little small ball at the end. At least in the cartoons, I can hardly remember. Joe Exotic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think I saw. What the fuck? Dylan's back. Where the, where have you been? No, it's been a while since I've seen a Dylan in the wild. At least he's wearing glasses this time. Yeah, where have you been, Dylan? You know, I don't know what's been going on. Okay, it's it's been a while since we've seen you, so it's nice to have you back. Okay? A little late. I'm just kidding. All right, so let's hop into this real quick. Let's see what... You know, let's just take a look at Gypsy Rose Blanchard before the surgery. Because I think she had a, she had some work done. Now, I know that she's... Her legs or something... Something's wrong with her legs or... I don't really... Fuck, I'm not really sure. I think that... Some people would probably say she was getting a check. No, there was a lot of story behind this. The mother poisoning her. Her mother had rosacea, rosacea out the wazoo. I don't know if you've ever seen what her mom looks like. She's redder than hell. She kind of looks like, uh, you know, the guy from Curb Your Enthusiasm. George Wentz's other brother, okay? Anywho... You know, here's an idea of what she looks like now. Some people would call her a hottie. You know, a lot of people are glowing her up. They're making her out to be like, you know, the specimen to be had. Okay. But she went to the she went to the clink. She got with this wide, wide guy. I mean, this guy's about seven foot one. Okay, he's got hokas on for sure. Like religious feet. And he's got like, you know, one of them big old button ups on. But she went to the clink. She came out. She still has, like, those gold fronts over here, okay? Joe Pesci would rip them out one by one, take them down to the pawn shop, okay? But that's what she looks like. You know, everybody was very, very, you know, excited. It was a heartwarming story. She found love. You know, she found the love of her life. And, you know, I always knew it was a scam and a scheme. The guy was probably a sex guy. He probably had, like, a nice pentagram, like, you know, s you know, sliced into, like, you know, on his back or something. Like, he ran his back up because, you know, nobody was going to do it for him. This guy's disgusting, okay? He doesn't have any friends. If you have, like, a pen pal in prison, things are not good. And what the fuck is wrong with you, okay? But like I said, he has rosacea. It's, you know, a lot like her mother. People did say she kind of, he kind of did look like her mom, too, so... I don't know if that's like, uh, you know, uh, mother issues or something. Anywho, um, you know, I was hoping for the worst. I'm always hoping for like a bad outcome of some shit. Like I like to see, uh, I like to see like, you know, a, a real good thing happen than like immediately it backfire. That way I can be like, yeah, you should never trust a smile. They never work out. Okay. I always feel, I feel like most of the people out here that have like smiles all the time, they got something to hide. I used to go to these AA meetings and there was this, what the hell's wrong with this kid's eyes? Look at this. This mom put this filter on. 
Okay, I'm just kidding. That's... I, I should have known better. That's a trick! But when I used to go to AA meetings, there used to be always people sitting out there with disgusting germ hands. Come on over! Shake my... No! You know I'm fucking sick. Every time I would go to a meeting, I'd come back... <laughs> coughing up a fucking lung. It was worse than being dope sick. And, you know, sometimes I'd come in, some people would try to kiss me on the forehead. Some guys would try to put their hands down my pants. All right? And, uh, you know, I, I, I you know... I feel like most of those people in there, they deserve the cough, okay? Because they think it's such a good idea to run up to people, shake their hands for sobriety. Don't do that, okay? There, these things are, you never know. Because I used to go jack off before I would go. And, and unintentionally, I would, no, intentionally not wash my hands so they had to touch my cum. I'm just kidding. But that was kind of what would go through my head sometimes. I'm like, you want to shake my hand? Well, guess what? <laughs> what you don't see is really going to, bother you later on down the road okay you're gonna have a smell that you're gonna touch me and everybody always had wet wet grassy hands man made me sick but besides that they're always smiling my point being everybody at those meetings fucking demented crazy sobriety smile oh is it really fun we all have problems here this isn't a good time fucking put a bullet in my head Hey, quit lying. But a lot of those people, you know, remind me a lot like the religious people or the type of people that, you know, are heavily, you know, heavily like, you know, well, that's the same thing as religious. I was going to say heavily into God. Some people just like live a life of smiles. But he, you know, what I'm saying is Gypsy Rose Blanchard, she got the guy of her dreams. She got with, um, I think he changed his last name to Blanchard too, and I think he's going to hold on to it. I know a lot of... Husbands and wives, when they get divorced, the wife might keep the last name forever. Hold it like it's hostage, which is fucking cool, dude. I love it when somebody doesn't get the number. They don't get what they want out of a divorce. And what'd you expect, okay? All right. Anywho, let's look at this Rose Blanchard husband real quick, because I don't really, you know, I'm not totally for sure what his name is at all. Actually, I just don't know what his name is. So let's see what his... He, looks like we're going to go back in time we're going to kind of look at like you know there was a little interview they did a while ago with him where he was sitting out on the damn porch okay and uh, i think it was it wasn't entertainment tonight i don't know where the fuck it's at we're going to take you big screen take you on an adventure but there was a video when like it was the coming days and it was him outside the backyard he's like i got all this land for gypsy okay or it might have been her family's fucking house i don't know okay what do I even look for? It's gone. What's wrong with this kid? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not going to find it. Maybe it's up here. Whatever. Gypsy's relationship with her dad, the lifestyle. No, this isn't it. Maybe this is it. Look at... Oh, this is definitely it. He's Look how fat he is. God damn. The newlyweds. So cute. And rocking that new ring, too. I, I see know. Keep your eyes off of it, okay? Looking like Leah uh, Remy. Oh, this was actually his mother. Rachel Smith. Now, this is his mother's probably fucking straight up Pearl. Mother of Pearl. Oh, this passed down to me. So yeah, it was always meant to go to my wife. So Okay, it's disgusting. So where's the part? I think it does take him out to the ranch or wherever he lived at. He was kicking rocks. He was like in anticipation of her coming home. It's not on here. Fuck! All right, whatever. Who cares? Show's over. So, the divorce happened. Let's hop into some of the latest news. Now, this happened whenever I was cruising across uh, Twitter a little bit while ago. It popped up. I saw it a couple days back, but I totally forgot it. You know, this was happening. Now, this is a story that's kind of died out, okay? Nobody remembers the Rose Blanchard tale. And the only reason it's coming back is because, like, a lot of these... A lot of these outlets out here, a lot of these production companies, they put a lot of time and money into, like, crap content. And they put a lot of time in, like, the story. Lifetime spent millions, okay? Procuring the tale and the rights. Uh, Nicole just sent me $20. Spread the word. Welcome back to my mother. Okay, hello. Thank you. Thank you. Gypsy and Ryan Anderson already broke it off. Well, we're going to... Yes, thank you. Thank you for the super chat. But we're going to explore it anyways. You know, I like, you know, I like a little bit of drama. Like, a, like I said, I, I, I deeply enjoy a sad story. And I would, I would love nothing more than this guy, you know, to be outed 
for his criminal activity. He's a jacking off guy. I think he's got a lot of sexual fantasies. Anywho, um, I think there's a lot of things that happen out here that are lies upon lies. Like you, you watch these Kardashian shows and every once in a while the numbers go down. And then they need something to like bump the number numbers back up. Either that being Kim Kardashian getting married to somebody once again or getting divorced. Okay. And uh, anywho, um, those are the type of things that like, you know, skyrocket a show back into popularity. And the Rose Blanchard tale was never anything that was meant to last long or ever be something interesting. It, it, I always found it bizarre. You know, for a while, I was like, what's, what is all this talk? What's all this talk around town? There's plenty of people getting out of prison, getting together, okay, with some fucking pen pal. What's different here? And then I found out the grisly details and how she was a survivor of her mother poisoning her. And Ryan Anderson came in, broke her out of jail with one chomp. All right, and uh, it's pretty cool. So let's hop into this right here. This is um oh another ten dollar check. Thank you, Dylan. Dylan's the man. Ten dollars, you know. The show definitely never is a you know it's never never a requirement for donations, but anytime it's given, pss, pss, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you, Dylan. Says miss you guys. All y'all hype train. Well, thank you. We're always here. Except I don't stream like I used to. Dylan was here back whenever I do this fucking insanity every day. And like after about 20 minutes, 34 minutes of this, I'm starting to get antsy. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm just kidding. Okay, uh, let's get into this. Whatever. This is all crap. This is all probably fake bullshit just to like really build hype for the new reality show coming out. You know, it takes me forever to get anything out of my mouth because I'm so distracted by all the bugs on my... I have a lot of bugs everywhere in this house. Just fucking crawling all over shit. Rats, rodents. Okay. Jules, guns. Drugs that I don't even do. There's so many distractions around me that it's hard to, like, keep my mind centered. I need some, uh... I need some of that Joe Rogan, you know, knowledge pill. So there is a TV show coming out. They have a reality show coming, you know, coming to your TVs pretty soon. You know, from what I understand, I kind of, yeah, it's right here. It's a up, upcoming docu-series, Gypsy Rose Life After Lockup, airs on Lifetime this summer. Is this old? Am I freaking out? Has this already happened? Okay, I'm assuming this is a new show. So it'll probably, like, definitely, like, you know document all the ups and downs of their new relationship. Now, you know that the husband, Ryan Anderson, he's about 709, you know, a lot of weight. He's huge. So I'm sure that he had like his hands all up in the damn food he, all night long, chewing in bed. You know, there was probably ants out the wazoo. Didn't mow the yard. Smelled like shit. I mean, I can only imagine the stink. The stink from that white tea. You can see some green right there. So he was probably, you know, it was, it was going to be a, you know, a terrible, tragic story, you know, from the get go. But it's nice. You know, some people need hope out here. Some people are, they got a gun in their mouth and maybe just something like this will keep them alive for one more day. But don't stick to these happy tales. Never last forever. They never do. So Gypsy Rose and strange husband Ryan Anderson speaks out. Full story coming to TV. So let's see a little bit of a glimpse of it. Here's TV. Hey, TV everybody. News. I just wanted to say thank you all for this. Now, he does live in... I thought he had, like, some type of, like... What do they call those ranch houses? Nah, he lives in a trailer. He looks like shit right now. Look at this fucking slime ball. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to say thank y'all for the support and the... And, uh... Now, this isn't the same guy I remember. I don't remember him looking completely blurred out like this. But TMZ, they have no other option but to, like, completely destroy any resolution they have... Or anything they can like put on their website for God knows what reason. All this filtration uh, crap. Nice messages I've been getting from people. Uh, I'm at a friend's like. Oh, there we go. It cleared up. Now he's got like one of them dumbass sides of the head. Look at this flat piece right here. That's the first thing I noticed. I'm like, I don't remember him looking like this. He looks like a fucking meth head now. He don't. He ain't the same guy. All right. When you go look at him months ago. Now maybe this is the like divorce has done this to him. Her running away. No, she probably came home with, like, you know, some new tattoos. 
and he didn't approve of it, okay? He didn't make the sandwiches. You know, he would definitely had a lot of orders whenever it came to the amount of meats and uh, creams on the sandwich. Cocktail just hooked me up. Cocktail dress, $5. Thank you. Do I have like a... Thank you. It says, yeah, Gypsy is now with her ex-fiance. Uh, oh, she's with her ex-fiance. Girl had multiple fiancés in prison, and I can't even find one. Yeah, they're deeply fucking hidden. Now, they will be on her TikTok. I know that her TikTok was, you know, was compromised immediately. Yeah, you know, it definitely was, like, you know, hacked. As soon as she, like, posted three or four videos, she was, you know, she had no idea about phishing scams. P-H. I-S-H. I-N-G. Fishing. I think that's what they used to call it on MySpace. So she probably got fucked over, lost all the cash, any type of, you know, monetary shit she got from her bullshit TikTok, which is good. But also, it's also a good story because we don't really think she's a good person. But if you look at Ryan Anderson, he, you know, a couple months ago, he looked, whoa, I just hit the intro by accident. You know, if I hit any of these numbers, I guess they're hotkeys on the scene scene collections down here. So you got to see Nicolas Cage. If you look at Ryan Anderson, he's not like the most holy guy you fucking, you know, you would think. Ryan Anderson has completely changed his form since like, you know, the big, you know, the big, uh, you know, wedding and, you know, whatever the fuck happened whenever she got out. He looked like a nice guy. Now he's looking like he's strung out all sorts of substances higher than hell. You know, living in a shit neighborhood, everybody's wet. You know, everybody's got this, got this crack in the road. I don't like it. So here, what does he have to say? Now he's probably gonna be dropping some tea. He's gonna be, you know, I would only hope that he's going to like, you know, slander her name. This is your opportunity. You gotta, you gotta tell the world how bad she is. Make her out to be a and, bad one. Uh, nice messages I've been getting from people. Uh, I'm at a friend's watching WrestleMania right now. It's great. Oh, Jesus Christ. Of course, he's a wrestling guy. You know, I should have known better. When you're this fucking fat, you always have a... There's always a stipulation to this type of weight. And if you're, you know, if you're definitely lonely enough to be writing gals in prison, you're probably into the WW. Now, we are going to be doing some WrestleMania coverage today just because I Show Speed went down and locked lips with everybody's favorite Logan Paul. They... You know, had a big tango in the uh, ring. In the ring, I'm assuming. We're also going to be checking out some, a vlog coverage of going into WrestleMania. Like it's not, you know, the the entire sport itself is as gay as it comes. Like it's it's very, it's under. You know, a lot of these guys they hide behind the belt, the red boots. They got the spandex on. They got all the all the jazz, but they're like real. Very, very, uh, you know, flamboyant guys in all reality. They're showsmen, okay? If you got to get up on the ring and pretend to fight with moves and slick each other up with oil, buff up your arms for all the guys in the crowd to look at, what do you think that's, what do you think that's telling you, okay? A lot of sugar in those tanks. So it wouldn't shock me that, you know, he's into the wrestling, but we are going to be, what I'm trying to say is, uh, the wrestling is bullshit in general. It's the people that I enjoy to look at, okay? Like the fucking, the crowds, okay? The crowds, those people are the same people you'd see at like a UFO conference, your local Golden Corral, down at the casino, any like Southern basketball game, football game for the high school. A lot of neck beers, disgusting smell, Comic-Con people, they're disgusting. They're, they're, they're people of fandom. People of fandom usually... Smell like shit, and uh, they're pathetic. So I thought that would be fun to crowd watch later. So let's hop back into this thing real quick. Let's end this. Let's get through this crap. This is taking too long. Great. I'm enjoying it. You know, I've been a wrestling nerd for a long time. <laughs> right now, it's great. I'm enjoying it. You know, I've been a wrestling nerd for a long time. <laughs> No, I've never seen anybody like, you know, I've seen a few videos out here of people trying to like finish their words and they and they, their emotions get so ahead of them they start to cry or laugh. Yeah, right now it's great. I'm enjoying it. You know, I've been a wrestling nerd for a long time. <laughs> yeah, you should feel ashamed. Now, you know he probably fucking tried to pick up a couple hotties in there. There's a lot of wheelchair people too. Uh, Most of those uh those wrestling events, they're complete they're all ramp 
They're all they're all ramps. All the stairs were able to flatten out, so all the the homies, all the guys on their big wheels, or wheelchairs or power wheels. I, you know, I would only hope we have like very good horsepower or a very good one, you know, good tread on these on these wheelchairs. These these cars, these people, they would call the people on wheelchairs. They call their wheelchair their truck. So I'm hoping that a lot of those people that go to these shows are going to be fully aware of all the popcorn on the ground to eat and uh, the grease and the stickiness of the pop, the water, the piss. A lot of, you know, wrestler guys, they don't want to meet, they don't want to miss John Cena coming up on the damn ring, shaking back and forth. They're going to be, they're going to wait. They'll piss their pants. They're not going to run to the fucking bathroom. They're cool with it. Now, I'm sure a lot of the wrestler guys, they probably have colostomy bag. They all have horrible health. This guy's second from a colostomy bag. Don't get it twisted. Uh, I'm enjoying it. You know, I've been a wrestling nerd for a long time. <laughs> uh, but I need to shave. Yeah, you could, you could probably use a haircut, too. This is a bad haircut. This shit sucks. But, um... You know, I just want to thank everybody for the support. It's been great. Uh, I'm just living my life, guys. Uh, Y'all will see flat. what really happened on Lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, we were filming a lot. So, uh, stay uh, Wild Thing says his wheels are bald. For that. And I just want to thank everybody for the support. Uh, if you support me, follow me. I will post more stuff eventually. Look at this hump back here. Now, I can't tell if that's like, you know, his skin or just that how much, you know, he does have a, I mean, this is not a wife beater, but it's a white tee. You know, I'm not somebody that wears a white tee under my shirt. I don't fucking sweat like that. Uh, and if I do, it's not going to be that much of a, you know, a problem where I can't wash it out. He ain't a washing guy. He don't go down to the, that thing. You know, people have them washing things. They got the, 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 the metal thing with the curves and they, like the, They'd use in the South whenever you don't have a washer and dryer. You go out there and you use the old utensil of the colonial times. I don't think he has any of those things. So, like, he has to spare a shirt as long as he can. I feel like when people wear white tees under their shit, they don't go to the washer. They don't go to the dryer. They don't go and clean their shit that much. So they have to make sure that it isn't completely, like, by, you know, you know, hazardous to be around, you know, other people with. They have to keep the stink at a minimum and the stain. Uh, I'm just, just hanging in. I just want to say thank y'all to everybody and, you know, God bless. Uh, JT says this dude needs to give up, give up and get a job. Was he not have a job? That's the first thing I would have thought. I thought he would be like one of these, you know, I don't know why I'm assuming he has a job. When I see people with glasses, I think they're working behind a, you know, a computer. Or they're working, you know, down at the damn, you know, somewhere, making money. He looks like a lawyer, like a, a small town lawyer. Maybe he he runs a bank. He's got a banker's face. But what we're about to find out, we got a little bit, a little bit more of an update right here. So it says Gypsy Rose. This is another update from TMZ. This is a couple days later. This actually was on their thing today. Um, TMZ dropped a hot new article. Uh, Colby uh, McCullough <laughs> <McCullen. laughs> ain't he a teacher I mean he, yeah that does look like a cheap teacher's button up you're right you know I was thinking of every other thing besides an educator imagine coming to school being like hey guys smell my fingers nobody wants to smell his fingers okay but look at this. Midlife crisis calls for a, you know, a big change in physical appearance. A lot of times people, they'll, they'll run, I don't know, to the bathroom looking for all the pills to take. When things go bad, when things go south. Other times, some people, they fucking run to the barbershop, get a new haircut, shave their eyebrows off, get into Satanism. This guy went straight to the bleach, man. He straight ble bleached his hair, stripped it of all the color, hoping she was going to come back. She ain't coming back. She listened to her mom being killed. You think she gets a fuck? You're a overweight, frustrated. Okay. She doesn't care! Okay, I'm still on the voice changer. She sat in the clink, bro. You should have known better. 
Anywho, it says Gypsy Rose files for divorce from Ryan Anderson. Uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard's making her split from her husband, Ryan Anderson, official. And she has just filed for divorce. TMZ has learned. According to the court records, uh, G, oh, they, they gave her a, an abbreviated name, GRB, filed for divorce Monday. And the petitioner here, uh, so this is everything from her side. We don't know the exact t details of what she's asking for just yet, right yet. But we know gypsies filed. And, oh, dude, I keep fucking doing that. That's good. That's actually kind of a good cutaway. What the fuck is this? It's not even the right thing. Oh, there he is. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. All right, so she's filing for divorce. Remember, Gypsy announced her split from Ryan in the private Facebook announcement at the end of March, uh, where she learned, or where she shared she's moving back in with her parents. Now, I do remember in one of these interviews it showed like the dad. The dad looked like a lot younger than what the mom was. I always thought that was kind of strange, like the the completely different appearances of uh, her real mother and the father. And he got himself one of these biker babes, the stepmom. And after hitting a rough patch with her husband uh, for, of nearly two years, I didn't even know they were married for two years. So they must have got tied the nut in the jail, in the clink. And then whenever he came out, he's like, fuck yes, dude. First time's last time. He probably had sex one time. She's like, you got to get off me, you fucking monster. The pair who were initially pen pals, okay, behind bars, were married in 2022, and then they started living life again. Okay, cool. So the split came after three months after she was released. Pretty good stuff. I love it. I love it. So I'm hoping for a cutthroat divorce. That's all I'm hoping for. Gypsy be pickpocketing? She might be. She might be a pickpocket Easter. She might definitely have like everybody's wallet in her pocket. I could see Gypsy, you know, being a person that collects IDs. You know, as like relics. A lot of serial killers would do stuff like that. They would collect somebody's dead person ID after they killed take it home as a relic so whatever good stuff let's move on let's get to other stuff let's head out let's hang out with Katie Dan the van I've been waiting for a while for them to drop a new you know van life video if you're new here you're never gonna know what the fuck this is just sit back kick it just take your time okay not everything has to be cool most of this shit sucks but there are a few you know you know gems that i find on uh you know my cruising through the internet cruising through youtube i like to find some you know really normal people and kind of just shit on their entire existence like you know these people katie dan a van this is dan and katie they have a, uh, they converted one of their, like, you know, fucking RVs or whatever the fuck they got. Like, one of these Sprinter vans. They converted it into a mobile home. And, uh, they go across country. They fucking ride around. Dan, you know, he's the worst guy ever. He fucking really is completely boring. He's like, you know, not the type of thing that I think Katie could get with. He's got one look. He never, ever has changed it. He's got Benjamin Franklin's pulled back bun. He's got the neck beard. He has these mud marks from dirt biking, okay? He's disgusting, and they're fun. They go across the world, and we're going to hop into their latest adventure. Going into our first ever van life oh, meetup now. event. And this is not just any van life meetup. I think it might be the... And this is not just any van life meetup. I think it might be the big... And this is, is not face? just any... What is Dan's face? Dan looks like he lost his fucking two front teeth, man. Look at the way he fucking looks right now, dude. This is like, uh, who's that guy? The, the Moonshiner TV show? His name was like Popcorn Moonshine or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. Look at those teeth. Look at that it, face. Van life meetup. I think it might be the biggest van life meetup in the world. Or at the very least, the yeah, biggest yeah. meetup in Mexico. Definitely the biggest in Mexico. <laughs> but before mm -hmm. we roll out of here, we've got some work to do. We gotta tidy up and sweep. Put away the dishes. And okay, so they haven't dropped the video in a while. Now they're probably full of shit in here. I I, I can't imagine they cleaned the, the poop, the sewage tank up in this bitch. They haven't dropped the video in a while, which makes me think these digital nomads that's, that's what they call themselves they call themselves digital nomads they explore the land via road and their computers so and they also make content which it doesn't 
really ever happen. They don't barely ever fucking drop a video anymore. I can remember there was a time when they were dropping shit left and right. Every fucking week I was having a fresh new video. Katie's fucking taking a liking to staying back at the crib. I don't think she wants to do any more of this, okay? I think she's decided it's better to stay at home than fucking look stupid on the internet. Water. And we need to restock on food. We got our groceries and we are on our way. We are leaving La Paz and headed to Playa Ticolote, Ticolote Beach, to attend Escapar a la Baja. Hold on. So we. So this is what it's like, you know, being out here in the middle of nowhere, having the elements to yourself, the mountainside, the beautiful sky. Now, this is something I would never do. All it takes is one guy with a knife to go from one place to the next, and I'm finished! We really don't know what to expect, because we've never been to an event like this at all. In fact, we only... I thought Dan was about to, you know, take a big risk and put his hand on her thigh. Okay, watch this. Like what to expect, because we've never been to an event like this at all. Right there, I think he was testing the wanders. He knows better. Katie would fucking smack him right in the mouth. In fact, we only heard about this event as we were driving around Baja, talking to other van lifers who all said, oh yeah, I'm going to Escobar. You should come to Escobar. Then we learned that it's apparently a huge thing. I think they're expecting something like 300 vans. To be there. Yeah, and two honestly, people per van, that's 600 people. It really is believable to me because as we're getting closer, we see more and more camper vans. Totally. What are your goals for this? Uh, JT says, I, I'd love to have a pimp camper van and not having a set home, but the vans, oh, yeah, these are expensive. Like this ain't no, I don't think this is a Mercedes Benz, but those, those Benz ones, those are probably like a fucking 200 grand for sure, okay? Like a Mercedes Benz in general is one of our biggest scams ever. You know, you pay all this fucking mo money. I almost said movies. You pay all this money for these like bougie ass vans. Next thing you know, they're broken down. Then you're like, oh, where's the nearest uh, Mercedes dealership? Good luck. Because that's the only place you're going to fucking have to take it. It'll have to be airlifted. You're better off just throwing it in the fucking water and collecting the cash. Say with like German car. I mean, I don't even know. Is Mercedes German? I wouldn't fucking know. Sounds like a French car. But I know Audis are like that too. The Audis are notoriously known for having these plant based uh, wires, okay? These fucking wires in their car. Like, you know, you take it out the Burning Man, a fucking rat will eat through that shit. Legend has it. I heard somebody tell a tale when they went to Burning Man. They left their car out in the fucking best place ever in the dirt. You know, they drove it all the way out there. They're beautiful Audi. You take it out to the shithole where a bunch of fucking vagrant drug addicts sit around dancing around the fucking fire having an experience on drugs. And they come back and all their cars are smashed up from people fucking, you know, dehydrated from the desert experience. And uh, also, you know, you might have like vandals, a.k.a. like wild animals breaking out your windows, sleeping in the car, eating, shitting all over the fucking seats, and then chewing through your wires. Because they're made of soy. Experience. Well, like we've been saying for most of this trip, we really want to get to know some other van lifers. And it definitely... Kevin Cruz says, people that make travel their personality makes me sick. I know. There are... There's sections on Tinder that's just like travel. Okay? I'll, I'll fucking... I'll like... I'll go to each one of them sections. Fly through the, the swipe right. Sometimes. Some of them like... I'm not, not the religious one. I can't handle that. What am I going to do? They come over... You know, they asked me for sun, go to Sunday Mass. Yeah, right. It's not happening. No fucking way. But there is a section on there called, you know, travel. So I go on there. I look at everybody on there. Most of them are about the same size as Katie. I'm like, yeah, you're going to travel? What, sit on, sitting on your ass? When I think of travel, I think about a stick, a backpack, going through the woods, exploring, trekking, like, uh, you know, Daniel Boone. It feels intimidating. Good people. The animals go up uh, in the foothills to get away from the people. I'm sure. I mean, like you know, it's it's quite a disturbance whenever people go out to these fucking festivals, uh, you know, to step all over the you know the holy land, the ground around them, just for live music and experiences on every type of fucking high you could have. I'm not much of a festival person or a concert goer. You know, I do the same thing at all these places. I go to the nearest corner and look. Stay away. I usually go to the bathroom and I look in the trash.
for money. But we have been chatting with our allegedly, our okay, fellow campers. We have been. We just haven't been reporting it. Safe to say that this is somewhat outside our typical comfort zone. Yeah. So I think we'll have a good time, though. We'll see how it goes. I'm kind of nervous. Whoa. Oh. They're all, they're always blown away too. Like Dan's always fucking like scared out of his mind to drive any fucking road on these trips. Like when they went to Europe, he's like, Katie, what side of the road? Okay, what are you fucking? You ever seen Vegas? Or no, European vacation? Don't you know better? Chevy Chase made the first mistake driving on the wrong side of the road. Oh my gosh! Look at them all. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Dang it! Oh man. Okay. You know, I'd be fucking pissed. You know, Dan's already about to be sick. He took too much. Okay. I feel like he didn't tell Katie what he took before he left. Now he probably procured himself like one of these lab, you know, fucking made methamphetamine pills because, you know, that's the only thing he knows how to do. He's a nerd. Okay. And if he is like a chemistry guy, he makes like the worst drug and the easiest one to make. And it's like, you know, the hardest one for him to hide, you know from looking like he's on. So he might be getting sick. His teeth, he's starting to grit from the amphetamine high. Hey, dang, this is crazy. Wow. Wow. Oh, it's a fucking Dodge. Now, if this thing breaks down, I don't know what I'd do. Like, I don't even trust it. I don't even trust a fucking Ford. All these cars, they all these American cars, man. You take them down the road like a couple spins around the block. Next thing you know, you have a flat. It's out of alignment. This is a Ram to a Ram R500. We are here. We are all set up. Oh, wow. We are enjoying a beautiful sunset. I guess this is night zero. To mark the eve of the start of this event, um, everyone's going to go out to the beach at sunset. Um, there is an official schedule, and I think that's on the schedule. Uh, and I think we're supposed to like howl at the sunset. I think that's really Actually, maybe it's already starting. Viewtech USA. Oh, oh, look, it's a fucking sky. God damn! I thought it was a bird! You're wrong. Don't land here, bro. They're gonna eat you alive! Look at that face. Are you happy to fucking be here, you H2BH? <laughs> What are you about? You been reading? I bet people are gonna start eating each other at night, eating each other out! There's uh, Bert Kreischer making a couple hams and hots. Blood, there's fucking blood or somebody's been run over. I can see Dan accidentally running over somebody. Still hasn't realized he's done it. Losing some weight. Losing like some weight. Alex and Lindsay, and their parts like right beside us. They're our neighbors. But this whole event is insane. Like, look, look, look. There's some Mercedes Benz. Speak of the neighbors. Benz. I love this whole event is insane. Like. There's me. You know, I always was like, you know, there's a lot of people out here that are fucking w into activities you'll never need to use in your life. This is fire, sp fire spin. A lot of people that are into EDM, they get caught up in like the flame spinning technique. Look at this guy. 
That, that, that was fucking stop. I forgot the mouse is bullshit. I got this new mouse, Dylan. You, if you've been away for a while, we got this the other day. Same mouse I had before, just wireless, and I'm already done with it. It came with these weighted things, and I'm like, why would it need to be weighted? Oh, because it's a light as a feather, and it still is. So I'm thinking about just giving up on the dream of going completely wireless and just dealing with a corded thing. You know, the corded stuff is always the best. Don't get it twisted. No, you don't have wireless headphones or bullshit. You're not going to get great quality from anything that is Bluetooth-based. Okay, except for a gun. So many rigs. It feels like... I don't know. I mean, it's a van life reunion, but it like feels like an EDM here. festival. Yeah. Or like yeah, see, what did I say? I should have fucking spoke a little bit quicker. So they are at what they would call out of their element territory. Um, this is a little bit too heady for Dan's liking. Now, he's a fish guy. He's into Fish the Band. Another band that starts with a PH. He's also a Grateful Dead head. He probably, you know, has dropped a couple, you know, rumors that he's going to be asking for her hand in marriage. I doubt it's going to happen. Know. I mean, it's a van life reunion. You know, he's been spreading the word. But it like we'd ever feels like an EDM to. festival yeah. or like Burning Man a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that we, we've also never been to that. So we, so we have no idea what we're talking about, but my best explanation at this point. Oh, Shady moved this past week? Where'd you move, Shady? Did you move to Cleveland? Dinner day one. That's me knocking on your door. FBI, open up! I'm just kidding. It's not the cops. Day zero. So how are you feeling so far? I feel like... I mean, yeah, you feel like, you feel like you're hungry for some chocolate. I can tell. That's a chocolate look. That's somebody waiting for sweets. I like to think of myself... The fuck? as a like confident person who's sure of herself but when i'm in situations like this i definitely feel like social anxiety i can't get over it man he'd be having that fucking benjamin franklin in front that's a fucking political hairline yeah. look at that one strand hanging loose in situations like this i definitely feel like social anxiety right there right there oh my god and i feel like he's got like a like a like a chromatic head is that what you call it? Like those old homo, homo erectus people? Homo erectus erectus? That's what it looks like, bro. So much slanted head. You know, the, the brain has been pushed back. You know, I'm surprised you can even fucking, you know, talk or speak. I had just gotten used to and somewhat like gotten over the feeling of, of like the social anxiety of trying to speak Spanish to like locals, like people at, you know, restaurants, whatever. I like just felt like... Okay, yeah, like I can do that. Like today when we were filling with water, I was like making small talk with the yeah business owner. I never would have done. No, he's bored. He he wants to flip the table at this point. Done that before because I've been like too nervous, but I did it. But now I'm like speaking English again. And having what's that out there? See, they're gonna be like fucking going to bed at eight o'clock. The festivities happen after you know the clock strikes ten. These fucking nerds are gonna be tuckered out. Okay, from a long day of sitting in the. What the fuck? God damn it. I do it every time I skip forward. But they're exhausted. They've had a long day. You know, the point of going out to like these things is getting wild. You know, I'd be out there looking for lizards. We decided to come to... You know, he would be the one that gets, you know, bit by a goddamn fucking like a tarantula day one. Karaoke night. It's like, Katie, Katie, Katie. It hurts. Can you take it? Can you suck the poison out of my ankle? Cause you know Dan's gonna be a fucking bitch if he gets by bit by anything out here. Rattles. I'd rather just die. I'm not gonna ruin the vibe. Oh, look, they are going out. Yes. Oh, Katie. Katie's probably gonna fucking be taking somebody else home tonight. Okay, Dan. Hope you're ready for that. What is this fucking thing? Like some military grade van. It's like something you have, like a Brinks truck up in this bitch. Damn, boy, look at them intense doors on the back. Okay, I've had enough. So I'm sure that like it ends great. You know, I'm sure there's arguments. We never get to see them argue. They're always too happy. It, oh, yoga. 
Now, Dan's probably perusing the people around here. He's definitely heading in for this territory because those are some double odd sixes. Those are some double odd junks, okay? Dan's going to be like, you know, definitely be standing back here, maybe on top of one of these fucking cars, trying to get a better look at the ladies. Damn! Pretty good stuff. Namaste. Now, this seems like a scam. They probably had to pay money to come out here. I feel like this is one of these things you have to pay money to go to. For sure. Like, this isn't just a, you know, a free thing you go to. You know, even though it's out in the middle of nowhere, you probably had to pay a fee, a lot fee, to join with these lizards. Anywho, that was a little bit of catch up with them. Okay, speaking of catch up, um, Jelly Roll, you know, the one and only Jelly Roll. He's back. He uh he won an award. He won a big CMT award. Now, some people out here, they love their country music. Jelly Roll kind of tricked everybody. Made them think like, you know, he's a country star. He's still, you know, into that hip hop. He's still into that rap. But he won a big award. Now, we're going to watch this for like two seconds. This is on CMT's actual, or no, it's CBS. So this is even worse. I don't know if I want to risk it. We can just kind of skip there's um some lady. There's Jelly Roll giving his big you know acceptance of speech. Speech, you know he's huge as hell. He actually won three awards last night. He's like, man, he shut. You wouldn't believe it. Okay, this is what he says at the first part. You wouldn't believe it. I just got an award from Martin Sheen. Billy Bob Thornton just gave me my third throw. Okay, never, never mind, never mind. Look how far away. I thought it was Martin Sheen. It's Billy Bob Thornton. Billy Bob Thornton couldn't be bothered to wait. He's a fuck out of here, man. Billy Bob Thorne. Okay, good stuff. So Jelly Roll, you know, he won some awards. There's Bunny over there. Hanging out higher than hell. Can't even see her fucking eyes with all these lashes. It's a lot of lash. It's like a uh, lamb chop. Good stuff. Good stuff. So he said, why do you think they were at the furry convention with all the howling? Yes, Jelly. Jelly has is having his clothes custom made now. I know. He's getting to be a ginormous fat fuck. I mean, he can't fit anything that's like, you know, sold at regular stores. He exceeds the X. I think there's only so many times you can have X in your, you know, your size of your clothes. And then it starts to become something different. Okay. They have a whole new letter. For how fat your clothing is. It's all elastic based too. There's no more fucking, you know, belts for jelly anymore. It's all elastic waistband. Good stuff. Okay. Um. Now, I was talking earlier about Big Nick. I don't even fucking know if I want to do this. You know, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted and like... Watching this one Big Nick video actually led into, like, three other fucking videos that, like, you know, I, I fell into, like, a loop because I was very curious how this stuff works. You know, I didn't think that, you know, we know about witches, we know about wizards out here. But do we know about warlocks? Now, I've seen the movie Warlock. There was a kind of like a knockoff version of the Wishmaster Back in, uh, you know, the 80s, it was a cheesy 80s horror movie, and it was called Warlock. And it kind of, like, was the same deal, okay? You conjure a warlock, he gives you a couple wishes, he comes for your soul at the end. So let's watch some Big Nick. He's going to be out here preaching the gospel. I don't really know how much I can handle this. Like, I'm already kind of annoyed. So we're just going to give it a second. You know, he's talking to the same homie the whole time, so... It can't be good. It's but it is it's it's nice to see Big Nick, you know, just all the way down here compared to normal height. I did ten years in prison. So he's me preaching the God. I don't want to watch this. I'm already annoyed. Bro, mandatory every day of it. I actually learned about Jesus Christ from like criminals, from from the darkest people that the society would call the darkest. Okay, look, he had a, and he has to hold it up too. This is a lot harder than just hand. You know, I don't know why he didn't hand it off. This guy did the best thing ever. He's like, nah, bitch, you're gonna hold this shit. Okay, you want to come over here and harass me with questions? Get ready. 
Right, right, right. And they like told me like, bro, if you want to find peace, if you want to actually get out here and turn your life around, bro, then this is what you got. This is it starts within. You got to yeah. start right here. You got to go find that spirit. You got to make that connection. What are you about? Okay, we're in the, one of these bullshit shirts. What kind of guy? That looks like Mr. Potato. Connection with God. What are the chances that you just walked into somebody on the boardwalk who's telling you the same thing today? It's God. It's God, bro. I went to California, known to many as America. What the fuck is going on? Oh, this is hit. Oh, here we go. America's modern day Sodom and Gomorrah to preach the gospel and have. Oh my God, preach. Look at it. He looks like a kid. This is too much for Big Nick. Look at those lips glistening from the grease. This doesn't seem like a holy food, man. Maybe me taking some straight ploppers later, bro. Can you imagine Big Nick? Okay, he's getting on a regular size toilet. His fucking legs aren't even touching the ground. Had a powerful encounter with two guys on the San Diego boardwalk. As I was in Mission Beach, San Diego, God had... The guy does not even look like a real guy over there. He looks like a potato guy. Two guys on... Look at this dude. Where'd you find him? <laughs> they can't... They cannot be friends. He must have just walked up thinking he was giving out free cigarettes. From San Diego. Look at this. Oh my... I love a shirt like this. It's not quite polo assassin... But it's definitely on the same line of like, you know, it says hustle and Chinese hustle drip. That's the attire. Hustle drip. Go boardwalk. As I was in Mission Beach, San Diego, God had highlighted these two guys to me and I knew he was trying to reach them. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new and turn on my post notifications. Also, make sure to watch. What's wrong with the way you walk? The full video to the end. I'm here now with introduce yourself. Aaron. Aaron. I'm school. Aaron, you look like you look like you look like you've been paid. Have you been you look like a drug addict or a drunk? And Nick had to get somebody. You know, this guy probably walked up because he does have the power of Christ in him. But Nick needed one more person just in case this guy straight up, you know, took all his cash. Which I would only hope. I, I would love to see Nick getting picked up and launched. And, you know, hitting the ground without his wallet. But this guy was probably paid. He looks like an industry plant for sure. He's got a really cool hair. Bro. Hey, these guys stopped me when I was here on the boardwalk just cruising. Oh, they look like they're going to take his money. And we're out here filming some content. So I wanted to ask you guys, man, what do you... They're probably freaked out too. This guy's still trying to figure out what the hell this is. Speaking of like warlocks and wizards, this is Willow. What do y'all think the purpose of life is? Probably like gaining knowledge and probably like uh, like sharing memories with people. Sharing memories? What about you? I feel like the meaning of life is to, first of all, to find your purpose, mm -hmm. acquire as much knowledge as possible. Mm -hmm and inspire as many people as you can. What do y'all think happens like when we pass Shut away? Up, so you get something to heaven. Heaven? Yeah. Okay. You believe in heaven as well? Yeah. Okay, what about you? I believe in heaven, but not in the aspect of like the Christianity side. Mm -hmm. I believe that when we pass away from here- Look at Nick. Nick was like, please just take this fucking mic. You can tell he's like handing it off. It's like, well, I can't remember what movie it was when, like, a small guy was, like, trying to get up on the top of the sh trying to get some cookies out the shelf, and they weren't even helping him, so he just sat there with his arm up. Nobody came for his rescue. Nick's like, just take the fucking mic, dog. I can't sit here with this. My arm is it's burning. With these small, nimble fingers, these fucked up pinky. Look at that pink. I've never seen a pinky like that before. Here, that... Broken. Your soul or your energetic being will actually ascend to a different plane. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what plane specifically do you think? It depends mm -hmm. on your karma from here on earth. Okay, oh. so you so you believe in like uh, Hinduism a little bit or like karma and stuff? Yeah, I just feel like whatever you put out, you're going to get back in. Mm -hmm. And then when you pass, depending on how you lived, mm -hmm. depends on where you go. Like that energy. Like, kind of like, like what you... Heaven and hell, but like, it's just like heaven and hell, mm -hmm. but it's also on good and bad. Like, yeah. It's like a balance. So kind of like you reap. These are like Tim and Eric people. I can't, I don't even know if this is, this This all seems like a big trick. We watched Big Nick pretend to like exercise people at one of his like, and he went to one of these religious, he went to one of these retreats and everybody in there immediately within five minutes of Nick being there, the whole place got possessed by demonic forces and people were throwing up. Nick was over there hitting people with those holy willow branches Okay, lined with the, the, the secretion of God. He went over there, put his hand on somebody's head. You know, pulling the, the demon out. Satan, come out now! Remove Satan from your soul! That's what he was doing. 
You know, you don't see that in fucking Exorcist. You have Father Marin over there, you know, saying, you know, some type of Yiddish or, uh, you know, Pig Latin, whatever the words of, you know, the, that the devil speaks, the devil's language. This guy's over here like, what the fuck is he wearing, dog? He's still kind of like, you know, starved out of his mind. He didn't get breakfast this morning. So Nick could like easily be like a delicious mushroom, okay? <laughs> what you sow, kind of, right? Yes, sir. Okay, gotcha. The reason why I ask is because we're out here today and we do like spiritual content as well. And we just try to ask people like thought-provoking questions, you know? And uh, for me, you know, I actually grew up Hindu. I used to practice like the laws of karma, chakra balancing, all this, you know, kind of spiritual stuff, right? Up until I was about 17, 18 years old. And then I kind of just became a little bit more of a stuff right up until I was about 17 18 years old and then I kind of just became a little bit more of an atheist Man, what the hell are you talking about chakra balancing it's like when this guy came to my, one of these truckers came to my jog job he's like you know I, I have a chain dragging off the bottom of my semi truck so I can do something called grounding it's like when people think that you know there's something about the natural metals of the earth and they help your energies inside it's real outlandish crap that people believe in that's right i didn't really believe in spirituality or a higher power so i'm pretty sure nick probably bounced around every religion he could get his fingers on or at all right but before i get into that how do we get to heaven in your mind like wh what's your opinion on that that's a hard question i'd say yeah. by doing right doing right yeah okay and so you believe in uh i guess you said heaven too but not in the christianity aspect what is your belief of like heaven exactly my belief as far as heaven is a place of pure peace mm -hmm. a place where everything would be in order yeah without as much negative as well because if you look at as far as any christianity god's like hey what are you looking at, lady? Bye. You ever heard of minding your own business? If you do this, I'm going to... Okay, I can't watch this anymore. This is actually giving me a headache. So outside of that, I was like, what about the demonic... You know, what is it... What do I have to do to get closer with Satan? You know, if it's a real thing. I don't believe in anything. I kind of like believe in the great nothing. And also, I like to call myself an agnostic. All right, I'm a stick. And I believe in, like, you know, science and what's to be found out. I'd rather just have, you know, both feet kind of hanging out both doorways. I'm not, you know, completely falling for the biggest trick ever. You know, the trick of the Bible, the letter T. You know, I can remember sitting in church when I was younger, and my mom would be like, don't you see the angels? I'm like, no! Okay, I was, I was more curious about getting my hand in that basket they'd pass around the cash. And having that holy circle chip. That thing was fucking heaven sent. I wasn't really about the wine though. I wasn't much of a wine guy. So let's see what it's like. You know to see. Um, fuck. I don't know if I want to watch any of this. I do have one thing I want to watch. This guy's about to tell us. You know what it's like to become a wizard. Because they have all kinds of fantasies. You know, And fantasy and reality are two different things. So this is um kind of like Erwin Saunders looking guy this is Joel Wint 13 years ago on becoming a real wizard introduction talk number one he's got three of these the first one got the most views 205k from 13 years ago and YouTube had barely anything on it so I give him a break so here he is he's got that Fisher that uh what is it called uh the grumpy old men hat Is this playing? Okay. okay, this is the first video on becoming a real wizard. And uh, this is going to be good stuff. Although hmm. some people probably aren't going to like certain aspects of it. Why? There's a light. Aren't they going to like certain aspects of it? Well, because they have all kinds of fantasies. You know, and fantasy and reality are two different things. This is like a, uh, Anthony Cum or Anthony Hopkins type of guy. Yes. This is not going to fit into your fantasy of what a wizard. But I always found it like strange. Like, if you have the glasses on, aren't they supposed to help you see? The first thing that people with glasses, they always turn them down. Like they're fucking giving me the eyes from across the room. Yes. Huh. It's not going to fit into what your fantasy of a wizard is. But oh, really? Real then I don't want to watch it. If you're not fucking shooting lasers, then it's bullshit. 
So here's the most replayed. Maybe he shits his pants or something. Or one of these dolls, or maybe one of his prisoners. Okay, finally gets unbinded. Let me pick a wise... Wait, what happened? Oh, he's got a ponytail. What the fuck? Oh. oh my god. Can you imagine how much just went down the rest of his underwear after that stand? Those books, those things that you hold in your hand. Let me pick a wise book. Oh. How about... That's... Oh. A wise book. What's up with these fucking dolls? There are people out here that live Disney 24-7. Their whole life is Disney. They love a fucking Disney. They like the old shell case, you know, VHS boxes. They can't get enough of them. And having a stuffed animal is on a whole new level of fandom. Now, he's probably got a hole cut in each of the bottoms of these things. Oh, this one. This one isn't going to look like a wise book. But here it is. Here's a wise book. Physical and Ethereal Spaces by George M. Yeah, he does kind of have a Whitney Cummings. Uh, Cody says, is it me or is it that forehead giving Whitney Cummings? Maybe the wrinkles or this part. Whitney Cummings does have no hair on her fucking head. Okay? It's not a shocker. We've seen it. We've seen her hairline. It's fucking pathetic. Remember the force? Well, the force. this is about the geometry of the force. This thing has fucking been through a hundred toilet sessions. This guy, the only place he reads this is the bathroom. Physical and... Physical... Ethereal spaces by George oh, Adams. Okay. Remember the force? Well, this is about the geometry of the force. Of the life force. Of the... What Rudolf Steiner called the ethereal formative forces. So if you want to be a real wizard and be wise... One of the things you have to respect is that a real wizard, and be wise, one of the things you have to respect is that other people know a lot more than you do. And that's why you read books. Because when you read a book... Okay, I'm going to kill myself. I can't watch this. It's my birthday tomorrow. I can't put myself through this type of misery. We're learning about the ethereal th forces of the sorcerer's source. So, fuck it. We're going to hop into Joe, Joe Rogan's, you know, he's back. He finally did something outside of his podcast. He uh, hopped on to, now we've watched Sam and Colby before. You know me and my, you know, my woo, my taste for the woo-woo side of the world. I love my sightings, my UFO cases, mostly just uh, nuts and bolts cases. Nothing that's outside of like, you know, you know, it has to be a little bit unbelievable because of it's something that we've never seen in our life. And when they start talking about dementia, they start talking about lizard people and, you know, all that crap that comes along with the fantasy of, like, you know, beings from another planet. People start to get up in their head and start creating wild, zany stories. And I like, you know, spooky, spooky tales. But when it comes to ghost stuff, I'm not into it. I've never thought a ghost was real. You know... But then again, who am I to say? Who the fuck am I to say? You know, people back then, whenever an eclipse happened or anything, they didn't understand what was going on. They didn't understand astronomical, you know, things happening in the sky. They didn't know there was a sun up there. That shit was witchcraft. So a lot of what we think now, or what I think now, can you know completely change a hundred years from now. I'd be fucking if somebody was to wake me up. I think everybody's a witch with whatever technology they got, or what has changed with time. So today, Joe Rogan's going to be you know experiencing what it's like to go through the portal of hell. He's on Sam and Colby's Ghost Network. Um, it's called Investigating America's Portal to Hell, featuring Joseph Rogan experience might be one of the most demonic places in the entire world. Mm-hmm. You ready, man? Did you hear that? Yeah. Oh, my God. See, I was about to say, that's not Joe. That's too tall. You ready, man? Did you hear that? Yeah. Summoning all the spirits. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. That is the most... Where's Joe? Scariest thing I've ever seen. What's up, guys? It's Sam Colby. Today, we are going to be investigating... I thought you had cancer. 
he could be a ghost right now. Sam and Colby, I think you know one of the one of these two has a an ailment. I think it might have been somebody else. Maybe it was the. Uh, I don't know. Why am I thinking you have the big C? Getting two famous performance venues, starting with Joe Rogan's comedy mothership, a spot that's Damn never it. been investigated. Then we're gonna. I thought that was Jelly Roll. What the fuck are you? He looked like he kind of looked like Joey Diaz. Venues. Joe Rogan spread like that. Starting with Joe Rogan's comedy mothership, a spot that's never been investigated. Then we're gonna compare that to Bobby Mackey. It's a place that's rumored to have a portal to hell in the basement. That's yeah, not happening. We're not going to watch all that. We're just going to see Joe Rogan's comedy fucking dance ground. So Joe Rogan opened this comedy club. You know, everybody loves a fucking place that you walk into. You pay a ticket price to watch things. Okay. What a fucking time to be alive. Look how scared he is. Okay. Joe Rogan fell on to like, you know, the hype a while ago with Bob Lazar. He saw what kind of numbers, you know, fucking are produced whenever you like do this type of content okay a lot of his stuff is either a ufc fighter a man of the punch or you know paranormal stuff and then whatever bullshit comedian he has come on his show and everything after that you know it's it's all boring it's all the same fucking questions and the same joe rogan but he bought this uh you know this fucking place in austin texas it's a comedy you know factory it's a factory of laughs and, uh, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, they're hyping up something that really isn't a reality. But Joe Rogan probably wanted to test the waters and, like, you know, show his face on YouTube a little bit more than it already is. So I don't know what kind of, like, why the reason he did this. Joe Rogan doesn't need the money. So these guys probably paid him the cash, even though he doesn't need the cash. I just, I don't understand why he would even fucking do this shit. These guys are fucking retarded. Sam and Colby? These guys showed up at my house. I'd have their heads. Oh, later, Bobby. Heavy. Heavy. Okay. But he's on here. He's making an appearance. Let's see what it's like. Now, they're telling us right now that it might be haunted. So I'm wasting my time. It because the place seems to be alive. And because of its violent history of punks and cowboys, it's certainly possible. But nobody's investigated this place until now. So what makes you think this place is haunted? First of all, it's old. But it was a big rock and roll club. So there's a lot of like wild people here in the 70s and the 80s. It was a really pretty crazy place. And 6th Street has always been a Sixth Street. very crazy place too. What the hell is 6th Street? You know, see, this is like looking very Mardi Gras to me. Right. We're on like the biggest street in Austin right now, I guess. New Orleans. What I've been told is that someone was murdered here, I think in the... Oh, okay. Crawl Out of Hell says Rogan had them on his podcast before. See, I should have known there was a little bit more to this. The only thing cool about this place, I like these theme park doors. I feel like I'm going into the Tomb Raider roller coaster ride at King's Island. The one that, like, you know, my grandma, she fell out the damn thing. Her whole head exploded. In the 1970s. When something evil takes place in a spot, you don't feel good there. Right. It feels weird. Residual haunting are the memories, the things that happen, the traumatic events that mm -hmm. happen in a building. Especially in a social building. People are going to be here all the time, so yeah. in oh, death, you're so want to come back. When you got a building that's as old as 1927, the amount of burned-in memories mm -hmm. in this building, they have to be crazy. All right, boys, do you like fat men or little boys? Uh, yo, hey, yo. Oh, you know what? He's not even going to be. I guarantee you he doesn't fucking make. Oh, wait, there he is. Okay, never mind. Well, no, oh, dude, they're going to fucking play. I'm about to get played. I feel like Joe's not even going to be in here. They're just going to keep cutting to his interview. And they're going to be fucking running around here goofing off. There we go. Here's Joe. Let's just skip a little bit further. I could give a fuck about any of this kind of tone. Like, hey, my Joe! I'm only here for Joe! Tanner, you got the little boy? No, I don't. Come on, Tanner. Come on, Tanner. Stand up. Oh, Tanner, uh, Tanner. Okay, okay. Oh, 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 me! Okay, uh, hey, man. Nice hair. You look great today. Scotty, <laughs> 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 you too! Get roasted. You want to get out of here? Who's the one about my childhood? Okay, yeah. So, uh, uh, Dakota, he had this childhood, and honestly, it was, it was not good. Oh, my God. That's something I'm going to do. I'm going to do the only one left. Thank you, guys. All right, good job, man. Good job, man. Say, shoot him! What? That was really bad. That was so good, dude. Okay, I can't. This is too fucking hype for me, bro. I feel like I'm in, like, a fucking meme, like, wormhole. A wormhole of memes. Look at Joe right here, locked. You better get used to it. 
That's going to be Joe later on in life. We're going to find out he's been eating human bodies. Yeah, you are awesome. to be allowed in here. <laughs> that is terrifying. So who is allowed in here? Comics. And there's a code. That's it. Right. Yeah, no we can't code. come in. Comics. There's a, what? Why has Joe always got a fanny pack? I feel like he has like a death, like like some type of illness, and he needs the vaccine constantly, like Blade from uh, you know the movie Blade. That is, you know, the Marvel comics v- half vampire, half human. So who is allowed in here? See, he always has it. What is up with that fanny pack? Yeah, comics. I've never in my life been like, I need an extra pocket, aka, uh, you know, a waistband with a big pocket. And there's a code. That's it. Right. No we can't come in. in. All right. Someone was murdered in this room. I think someone was. I wish somebody would get up in there, dude. There has got to be something. I feel like there's human flakes of skin, hookers, toenails, maybe thumbs, fingers. What are you hiding in that little bag? Like, I've never, and he always has it on him. What is up in that motherfucker? Does anybody, has anybody ever found Definitely out? shot. In- or at least try to yank it off. You know, they take rapper's chains. Somebody needs to take Joe Rogan's fanny pack. A hundred years in a rock and roll club, a nudie movie theater, and a pool hall. Someone died. Someone died. Yeah. Someone died. 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 All right, you guys lied to me. See a bitch. So that was Joe Rogan for about 30 seconds. We investigated an uninvestigatable place. All right, let's hop into this. I show speed. Coming in hot. We have to do it because it's in the fucking... Isn't it in the... Is this in the title? It's not. So I don't really have to watch this. But I have it pulled up. I'll never get to it unless I get to it. It's Friday morning. I just... That's my end. So I, I show speed. Okay, I, I'm showing signs of criminal activity. I show speed is going to be one of our guys. I think that he's going to have a case coming soon. It happens with all these streamer guys. They always end up getting caught on camera doing something a little bit spooky. Guys, this is, this is so y'all. So he showed up. He made his grand debut at WrestleMania. Okay. He went to go. I don't know what he did. I, you know, I don't know anything about this besides the fact that it says... I'm just entertaining y'all. Don't take it personal. So there is no info on this. I think he gets in the ring. Smacked around a little bit. He's doing this is all just for, uh, you know, to make him popular amongst the neckbeards of the world. Uh, that I snuck in and doing, he's doing all that. Y'all always think I'm not doing nothing while I'm streaming, but I am What's up, big foot? doing something. So see y'all boys in the next few. All right, guys, it's Sunday morning. Um, I just. Oh, it's his alpha, bro. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it definitely could be his alpha brain. He's just got like a fanny pack full of that shit low t- to the top. Joe ain't taking no vaccines, just TRT and alpha brain. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen some of the old footage that has been recovered of Joseph Rogan being in support of vaccines. He's a total shill sellout. Actually, it's it's what happens, man. A lot of people need to start calling them on that shit. We need a big apology, you know, for the right. The right probably deserves it, right? Right, right, right? Okay? Joe Rogan's a fucking shill and a scam. That motherfucker's scared out of his mind of everything in this world. He just woke up, you know? So I wouldn't be shocked if like, it finally comes out that, you know, he didn't do anything criminal. You know, technically, he just lied to all of his alpha audience. Okay, he's just a big bitch. Go from my uh, hotel, and today I did a stream, you know. Oh, uh, I did like a quick stream of Lee, like going to a shopping spree and trying to buy a cat. But uh, now. That's a lie. He was about to say he went to the strip club. Like a quick stream of Lee, like going to a shopping spree and trying to buy a cat. But uh, now, I'm just showing y'all now I'm about to do this WWE little little thing, so. It's looking like he's looking like a fisherman right now, or he's got like you know a, I don't know. It's a witch. Which is now this is one of these baklavas. I think that's what they're called. I'm trying to get one of these. I'm trying to get a poo shiesty one. That way I can go around the neighborhood looking like the neighborhood. This will come. Out. Okay, everybody in the whole neighborhood be wearing these masks in the middle of summer, spring, whatever. Robbers masks. Oh, literally right. Ex- they look fun, but then I would wear it one time, and I'm like, can't breathe. Okay, a sweat gets on the shit, and it sucks into my mouth. It feels like I'm like you have my head over a plastic bag. Back on the same day, so guys, I just 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 showing y'all that you know I'm working. You know, so yes, he did. I do. That's actually where I got it, Dylan. Y'all see the don't tell anybody. Right, the good WWE stuff. Peace out.
Come on down. All right, guys, I'm about to go up there as a dress as a prom bottle. Can't wait to see what unfolds. Can't see what's about to happen. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I did sign a prom. Blah, 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 blah. Y'all already know. Y'all see that later. But yeah, I'm about to go up there after with Logan Paul. Dude, he's nervous as hell right now. I've never seen I Show Speed pretending so much in my life. Usually he's all cocky. He's all wild. He's got a kid's imagination. Right now, he's about to be in front of like a 1,200 neck beards, a bunch of guys that probably have a six-shooter in their boot. Okay, like, you know, wrestling's a heavily white sport, so they might... Oh, have fun. Let's see what's about to happen. Take it one or two away. I don't know what's about to go, but let's get it. Super redneck past time. Right, let's get it. Speak it. Look at this shit. What is up with this? I mean, I don't I couldn't even imagine going to one of these things. Look what he's wearing. This is like uh who's the guy from the Goofy movie? Power Strike or whatever his name is. This is Power Ranger like like Judas Priest costume. Crap! Ninja! Look at look at look at the guys. Look at them. They already got the thumbs down. Everybody brings their disgusting kid that has ketchup all over his fucking face. These are the guys of wrestling. Look at him. Look at this. Definitely got like a Mister. That's like a like a Mountain Dew hat, for sure. Oh yeah, everybody's you know. Logan Paul is definitely cleaning up with this. You know, these are the dumbest fucking people you could find in your life. Like, most of these people, like, believe they could probably fly if you told them they could. All right? They're going to, like, you know, run and jump at you, like, right in front of your moving car. If, like, you're Batista or The Rock. They, they, they're in love with their wrestler guys, okay? They're massive toy people, too. I think they're toy collectors. And I'm not shocked that like everybody's like primed up. They just they're just handing over hundreds and hundreds of dollars into that wrestler goo, that drink, the drink of the ring. Oh, I thought that was a person. Animated sign. Yes, yeah, definitely. Uh, they tried banning. I'm in my hood. NASCAR fans. Yes, these are NASCAR. These are all all these type of people. Like they like things that have flames on them. Like a, a flame decal kind of like, you know, kind of puts them in like a hypnotic state. Everybody's got blackberries, father's old blackberry. But they are, they do fall in line with, you know, everybody that goes to a golden corral is into all this shit. Wrestling, NASCAR, smoking bud. Now, not to say that weed's like a wrestler's pastime, but the only thing that like kind of reclines him in the couch and keeps him like, whoa, what did I do that for? Keeps him like, you know, zone sixth, you know, for a wrestling, you know, event, you know, relaxed out their gourd is, you know, rolling up a nice bleasy with like a raw paper. But real cheap, like these are all, these people buy most of their stuff at like an FYI or they go to, they go down to, you know, the mall, hanging out, drinking pops all day. Like they're gift shop people. You know, I know about a hundred of these guys back in Kentucky. They all look the same. Echo United hoodie. You know, every other fucking sports team that's, you know, the farthest away from the state. Pittsburgh, every fucking bullshit sports cap you can put on. They got the glasses. Look, look, look at this guy's head right here. This is radical, dude. I can just imagine the smell like, you know, have everybody, everybody's got their arms up too. Don't, you don't want to be at, like, most of these people are used to the stench because they live in it their whole life. They're, they've just grown like they could, you could probably throw mustard and gas in these type of places. And these people have built, you know, a fucking tolerance to the smell of like toxic fumes. These are the people we need to throw, like, in a country that, you know, mostly uses chemical warfare because if it comes down to that type of battle, these are the guys we need in the front lines. Have them use all their mustard gas, all their toxic fumes. You know, they'll probably die, but they'll last a little bit longer, maybe weaken the front line. 
But I mean, most of these people, you know, they put their arms up. Everybody's got hoodies. You don't need a hoodie. It's probably a thousand degrees with all these people up in here. The lights, the phone. There's only a few. I'm really shocked by the lack of phone we have in here. Because mostly everybody has like a flip phone. There's not a lot of camera or flash on their phone. Everybody's broke. They don't have nothing to their name. They're spending all their money on corn doggers or like, you know, Speedway wing dings. Wasting their riches on crap. You know, saving up for WrestleMania. XX WrestleMania. They want that belt. Oh, yeah. Is that it? I mean, and then, then people just sit through this whole thing. They just sit and watch this. Bunch of guys slicked up. You know, a lot of, lot of stone sour. I bet there's a lot of devil horns that come out here. The worst type of music, corn fucking is like an anthem to half of these fucking wrestlers' entrances. All right, Slipknot, Corn, Mudvayne. Mudvayne's a, I think it's a, a band from Cleveland, which makes me sick. But I'm not from Cleveland. I'm from the old boggy, boggy bottom boys, okay, of Kentucky. You know, I'm, I'm from the land of the blue grass, the strings, okay. People playing on their washboards. Yeah. And this is all they wait for. This is their favorite shit. What do they call this? Isn't there like, there's certain terms for wrestling. Uh, um, ketones or, um, is this a, is this what you call a mark? What the fuck is a mark? And look at this. He's got the smallest mark in his pants ever. What is that pathetic shit? Small as hell. All the steroids you can ask for. And I always found it, like, fascinating that, like, the fattest audience is, like, coming in here to look at fit guys. You know, none of these guys can get up off the damn chair. That's why it, these places are not standing room. They're all bleached up. <laughs> all right, I'm done with this. I don't want to watch this anymore. Uh, yes, Avenge Sevenfold. ICP is probably a big... Actually, ICP, they... When I was younger, I played a game on the PlayStation 2 called Backyard Wrestling. Because my one of my friends up the street, he was the only one I knew that had a PS2. And I'd go over there and I would, I would be forced to watch his brother Scotty playing Backyard Wrestling. It was like an ICP game. And he was like, you know, fucking straight wicked out of his mind. All he was doing the whole time, I was just hearing a bunch of ICP music. And he's jamming, drinking Fago, playing Backyard Wrestling. All right, um, we're an hour and 45 in. I am, like, winded. I don't even know what I want to watch anymore. I could not imagine having to do, like, a fucking nine-hour show. I'd lose my mind. Let's see what's going on with, uh, is this in the fucking title? It's not. Okay, so I can skip that. Skip that. What's going on with the Daughtry Dozen? Now, the Daughtry Dozen is one of these families, uh, like, that's a, you know, it's a, it's a red-headed mother, a mother of the red hair variety of people. She's got a bunch of kids she stole. I can't, you know, I can't vouch for that. You know, that's alleged. But I think that some of these kids probably have more of a tale to tell. It's, it's, it's the same scenario with all these vlogger families. Always one kid speaks up and the rest fall in line. They all fall like dominoes. So I'm waiting for the allegations to come. This is Alicia of the Daughtry Dozen. She does a bunch of shopping haul videos. And uh, get ready with me. Like cooking shit. And then uh, whatever else. She's a supply person. She does nothing but goes to the store and buy shit they don't need. And, uh, you know, I like to catch up with them every once in a while. Most of the time it sucks. Like, it's, it's unwatchable shit. Like, there are some platforms out here that, like, their content is entirely Daughtry Dozen based. But it, it's just tough, man. It's like, you know, I'm sitting here. I'm just staring at Talisha POV shopping. You know, she's always looking for, like, the cheapest crap. Hi, everyone. You know, she can get her hands on. 
But what really bothers me the most is that she makes this money off YouTube. She's got, you know, this shit is in 1440p of the iPhone variety. She's not using a camera. And if she is, she's gone out of her fucking mind. She doesn't realize, like, I don't know, fixing the landscape. What's the regular landscape for, like, a 1440p resolution? Landska or whatever the fuck it's called? Like, there's certain lay or, uh, landscapes that you have to that work the best for certain resolutions. I don't think she's figured it out. She's got a fucking straight up, like, you know, wide screen. screen. What the fuck am I saying? I sound like a retard. But, like, she's got this wide screen, like, you know, vertical position. It's This isn't a full frame. This is like, I feel like I'm watching The Holdovers with Paul Giamatti. Like, some type of vintage film landscape. Whatever. It's not important. And it's Alicia with... Uh, Cody said, when I was younger, they were mad that I was watching Barbie, Barbie Nancy Drew and wanted me to watch WWE. Oh, I forgot. You told me that your, your dad or somebody took you to a WWE wrestling experience. I'm glad. Like, my parents wouldn't let me watch it. They were like, no, we're not going to. And then my parents didn't want me to watch that shit. They, they, that was trash to them. They're like, we're not going to show you men with their shirts off or it's bullshit like that. They, my parents were like, if you want to go see Playwright, we're going to go see like a Shakespearean play. That's all wrestling is. It's theater. And I think the, the person that said it best was uh, Werner Herzog, the director, the guy that did Grizzly Man. He made a great statement about how he loves wrestling because it reminds him of Greek, the Greeks doing their their great plays. All right, let's hop in. The Doherty Dozen, and this is my weekly grocery haul for my family of 13. Here is this week's dinner menu that we made together as a family. Zoe's 12th birthday is on Wednesday. From there, we add in what we'll have for breakfast and lunch every day to make our grocery list separated out by areas of the store. So this is bizarre. Like, I never in my life have I ever seen my mom have such a, you know, such a intricate, like, uh, shopping list. Hi, everyone. It's Alicia with the Doherty Dozen and the... But I think Alicia, I'm sorry I'm restarting this. Alicia's highly intoxicated on some sort of pharmaceuticals, I think. I think that uh, you can tell from the pupils in her eyes. You can tell from them, the pupils in her eyes. Um, and, like, the energy she has. I think she's, like, on one of these low-grade speed balls. Very, very, very excited about making these uh, shopping videos. Very excited about the family, you would think. But, like, she goes all out. Like, she organizes. She folds all the fucking kids. She gets this. I mean, it is unreal. Like, some of the organ, organizational skills she has. She has, like, a fucking storage, like, a, almost like a roll-off trash can. Or not a roll-off. Almost like one of those freight containers in her backyard that has a bunch of refrigerators and more shelves for supplies. She's obsessed with the collecting and organization shit and this is my weekly grocery as you can see from this list of shit she's about to show for us my family of 13 here is this week's dinner menu that we made together as a family zoe's in fuck in rainbows has said i just got back from wrestlemania in philly 12th birthday is on wednesday from there we add in what we'll have for breakfast and lunch every day to make our grocery list separated out by areas of the store. Today we are at Walmart because I need to get like a lot of laundry detergent, stock up stuff again. And I don't know, whenever I have to do like a big toiletry or cleaning supply stock up, I come to Walmart. I just feel like it's cheaper than Wegmans for that kind of stuff. Um, just did a Costco haul last week with James and got a lot of like the basics. Now, what I've noticed is that she's not sticking with what she used to do. Now she's probably going to do it right when I say it. So I don't want to say anything yet. I'm just waiting in, in silence. Of course, didn't think to get laundry detergent. I actually forgot to get a lot of stuff. Um, so this won't be like a huge haul, but yeah, we, we will be here a little bit. Let's get going. Okay. God damn hard. it. She didn't fucking do it. She used to always like be like, come on. And we'd share a cup of co a sip of coffee with her. She used to always be like ready for the first sip and then and the camera would pan in with her lips 
and she'd take a drink of the Joe. And got a lot of like the basics. Of course, didn't think to get laundry detergent. I actually forgot to get a lot of stuff. Um, so this won't be like a huge haul, but yeah, we, we will be here a little bit. Let's get going. Okay, I'm gonna see if I have more bags in my trunk today. I do, and I'm just gonna get a cart out here since I happen to park right next to the shopping carts. What was wrong with those wheels? Since I happened to park. Oh, I thought they were shredded down. I saw like a little slant of it. I'm like, I thought we had some Bones Reds, like old skateboard. They used to have these things called ABEC 10 Bones Red or ABEC 8. You'd get on, they were the bearings for a skateboard wheel. You'd fucking stand on it and like, you know, you just fucking spin around the earth a thousand times. Right next to the shopping carts. What's up, Isabella? Well, if you've ever wondered why my very dirty van. Gigi says, how can you forget shit if it's on her list? I think her, her vision is very compromised by the pills. It has a Sully sticker. And I think that she's just running around. I I, I think that she gets sidetracked very easily. I think like she's easily sidetracked. She loses focus on the mission at hand when she goes to these fucking stores. Honest, that's because we so it's like it's easy for her to like pick up other shit. She's like, oh, a deal? And then she fills up the cart. She doesn't have any of her other little cronies, her kids. Her kids are always helping push like a train of carts. And I hope that she's not a coupon person. I, I think that if she is, it, it's got to be fucking terrible to be behind her in line. Name our vehicles. No. And this van is named. The van's covered in shit. It has a Sully sticker on it. That's oh, because she named our vehicles. And this van is named Sully. Okay. I do have... Oh, it looks like these. Out of this, but this should be. I don't know, just throw in like that. In New York, um. It's got the fucking crinkling. It sounded like me when I was on my old bed as a kid with the piss liner on it. When I was a child, I would just wake up floating in bed, pissing everywhere. My parents were like, we gotta put on the piss guard. So when I would roll around in bed, it sounded just like this. In New York, um, allegedly, you have to bring your own bags or suffer the consequence and pay five cents for a very flimsy, cheap paper bag. There we go. Make it space. It's a beautiful day. Cart one. No, oh, she's got cart one. Okay, so I'm not stupid. She is definitely going to be doing multiple trips back and forth. Now, as you can hear right now, she's got like, you know, one of these fucking like stones or something, you know, embedded into the wheel of the cart. Listen to the way it sounds. Welcome to Walmart. I have to like rip right in from looking at all the clothes because they're seriously. So cute. Okay. Oh, another haunted thing she does is she dresses her. Not, I don't think she literally dresses the kids. I think that she, she's shown on video that she makes out. She gets outfits folded every day of the week. All the kids have a matching outfit. She showed us on one of the videos. She's like, there's two. She had a whole days of the week show from Monday through Friday, and every kid had to wear the same bullshit. Purple. No, let's start with the, yeah. What's all the, what are all the dots on here? What kind of crap paper is this? Yeah, we're going to start with the cleaning stuff and then grab the toiletries. And wrappy paper and candles for Zoe's birthday. And that should be cart one. That's it. I feel like I just stocked up on all of this. Okay. We... Get a deal on that. It's an open box. Now she does do some stuff I think you know hopefully we can catch it one time but I think she drops things and she's like oh there's a crack in the bottle I just stopped up on so she tries to catch a deal all of this. okay we are all loving this stuff I feel like our clothes have never smelled so good and then I've gotten this which was also amazing. So, I don't know if I've shown it to you. I have this thing in my laundry room and it's got 
two slots that you can push the cup in and the beads come down. She's terrifying looking too. She looks like the like some type of like skeleton person. Like she almost looks like like she should be on like compound media. She looks like a like a Bill Schultz. In my laundry room and it's got two slots that you can push the cup in and the beads come down. So we have very like western looking too and then bangs and torrential bangs. The purple in the one and the green in the other. Anyways, we really like it. And uh, yeah, so I can stock up on all that again. I'll have to do a day in a life this week so I can show you guys. Actually, I don't know if I'll get to a day in a life this week with Zoe's birthday. Jesus Christ. I mean, what the fuck? This is a week's worth of, of what is this? Like some type of like fabric smelly. I, I have the, this is like fabric, not even fabric softener. It's in it. It, it's an extra thing you put in there for the smell. So unless your house is like ridden with cat piss and like the walls are lined with black mold. I don't know why we would need this. Like the amount of kids she has. I mean, I don't understand. Like this is one of these big scams that they get you. Like, just buy some decent smelling stuff. Use some fucking softener. That's all the extra scent you need. But we'll see. Damn. Yeah, why not? Just fucking five will do it. Oh my god, look at me, she's buying. She's got to have like a Facebook marketplace or she's selling this shit on like, I don't know, eBay. Okay. Get four and four. And then I also... Four and four? You got fucking five. No, you do like, four and three. Right? No, I didn't count. Okay, they're bigger bottles. You know, I was I was tricked by the width. Four and four. Get four Odor four. blaster. So real. And they must have like a bed bug problem. Okay. I, just, I don't have any. Because legend has it, Luna, the smell of like fruity shit or uh, uh, what do they call it? Like lavenders type of shit will keep the bugs away. Light. So I wouldn't be shocked if like some of these kids, they run out down the creek or wherever the fuck they live in the woods. They come home with all sorts of critters. I like washing delicates. The laundry detergent since it's right here. Like the gain aroma boost. Yeah, she's definitely hiding some serious funk. I mean, she's loading. This is one cart, too. So I should have known better. This is the laundry cart. Well, it's for dark. It's like fucking goddamn like like some type of like Drano or some shit. Woolite. I just want regular sheep. Woolite. I guess everybody else did too. All right. Well, that'll be something for a different week. Okay. I just want to. Why did she touch it? I'm telling you, she went to touch to see if there's a crack in it or she's stabbing it on the side to like get a deal. Different week. Okay, I just want to check if they have the dogs. Or the methamphetamines do have her very touchy, everything she goes for, she has to touch. You know, to imprint it into her drug addled mind. Supplements, real quick. I know they didn't have them last time. I really need to adjust my chewy order because we're going through it before. And we've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen one pet in their house. So unless they have their kids fucking leaking on these no leak, you know, odor pads or whatever the fuck, you know, in the middle of the night and their night tears. I've never seen a, a pet in their videos. So. The next delivery. I don't buy it. Like she must be feeding them dog the food. calming bites. I like the uh, chew no poo. <laughs> yeah, we're all out. All right, on to get dish soap and garbage bags. 
Oh, she brought the bag. She brought the bags from in her car. So she's at somewhere. Maybe she's one of these people, these fucking psychos. It's like, no bag. We don't need bags. We got our own bags. So she's going to be doing like 40 different trips, unloading, then bringing the empty bags back in to fill up again. Laundry detergent, scent boosters, wool light. They didn't have the wool light I wanted. This just sounds like we're in a power station right now. Like her phone or whatever she's using is picking up every sound of light in this place. The electrical sounds. Morning, get some Dawn Platinum. I also love the power wash. Uh, and Rainbow says, like I said, she definitely isn't allowed to buy any Sudafed in the Walmart in her county. Yeah, she probably is outstate or welcome at these pharmacies. You can only, you have to sign the paper whenever you go up there to get Sudafed at the pharmacy. Same with buying needles. But she might have some what you would call smurfs like you, know, you heard that term from breaking bad they would pay these guys to go over there and you know buy boxes of pseudofed the real stuff not the, the real suede ephedrine or pseudofedrine whatever the fuck you want to say I just so i i wouldn't be shocked if she's like in the back you know has her kids you know learning the recipe cooking up a batch down with this crank at like the end of the day and just uh, Kay says, uh, that's the quietest Walmart. I know, it's so quiet you can hear the buzz of the light. Scrub it. I don't know. It's like that final touch before we close up shop and go to bed. And then the teens inevitably will like... Koi says, this is giving me so much flashbacks of working with, with the offshore boats and getting groceries for them. Everything in bulk. Get up and make yeah, I don't, I don't know why she's not going to a fucking Sam's Club. She's probably been kicked out. Food, but you know what I mean. Because you would think that she would want to buy big bulk things. But she does also seem like one of these psychopaths, you know, from the drugs that thinks like, you know, having a bunch of little things is, you know, more cool than having like, you know, a ginormous jumbo amount of something. At least it was clean for a minute. Get garbage bags at Costco. Like the 30 gallon, even though, or whatever, 33, it's fine. Even though it's inside my kitchen and not a 33 gallon garbage, I just feel like this whole. Jesus fucking Christ. So she wants a bigger bag for a smaller can. Better. Which I bet their trash is unbelievable. They probably somehow worked a deal out because of the kids that they have. She's probably procured a bunch of different garbage you know canisters then those she probably has like 10 herbies at her house quote unquote, garbage kitchen garbage sized bags we're having zoe's birthday party that's all they've got this is all she's gotten so far so it is a I, I, i'm assuming that was morning light whenever she went out there it's not night and getting close to night she has to leave right when she drops the kids off and spends all day getting shit from the store. She hasn't gotten wool late. She's done with one list. Hey, Monday. Or Solar section. Eclipse just the cleaning day. shit. So I actually placed a catering order through Wegmans for that. That's getting delivered. So I don't have to worry about like the food for Monday. Well, for the party. Still gotta get burgers for dinner. Okay, I'm looking at the... I know, this is ridiculous. I'm looking at the toddler beds because Harley still comes in and sleeps on the little toddler bed in our room and it broke. Oh my God, dude, this is about to bring me to tears. You know, this is a fucking hour and 20 minutes. I feel like there are mothers out here or fathers, whatever the fuck, whoever finds this shit fun. They watch this in all its entirety. The entire confection. I would love to see police footage of them going to the house after, you know, one of these horrific events and they just see the house lined with shit. They probably have hundreds, 
hundreds and hundreds of like, you know, fucking just f unopened packages of shit. Stuff. It's not going to be in this aisle. Like plates and stuff, you know what I mean? For what? I missed it. It was a fucking five minute thing and I fell asleep through the eclipse. I don't think you need to like, you know, celebrate some celestial thing or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Like, you know, the moon just going in front of the sun. All right, I can't ha I can't watch this anymore. My face is burning. We got to get into the Trish. The hours come. That's why. Thank God Trish doesn't have like more than one video out. You know, there's a few TikToks and stuff to cover, but I'm just I'm hoping that there's nothing else out. I, c I couldn't handle any more than a few minutes of that crap. So Trisha Paytas is back. She's going to be. You know, giving us an update, a life update. It looks like it's uh, nothing but eating, though. But that's nothing new. I mean, all her videos are her snacking, chowing down, having too much, you know, getting her fill. We had some Morgan vlogs. You know, we had some more The Hillbillies. I don't know if you guys remember that vlog family we covered, The Hillbillies. They have a brand new Blessed Day video. You know, it's from their Easter vlog. No, it's not. It's just about, well, oh, no, it is. It's, it's got hashtag Easter. But I thought we, we saw them go do their Easter festivities. We saw them go down to the local field and collect bugs and, you know, old pill bottles in their Kentucky fucking shithole area they live in. I'd like to say this is, you know, I'm trying to think of areas that look like they, they all kind of look the same over here in the holler. But she's they, she almost seems like they're, like they're close to the gorge or I don't know I don't know where the fuck they're at. Probably near a park or a national park. Anywho, we'll be watching them tomorrow or not tomorrow. Whenever the fuck I do this again, I can't I can't watch these dementos. Like I, I, the wife is enough to look at. The whole family fucking freaks me out. It it takes too much tolerance to watch. Even though I'm about to watch Trisha Paytas and her big fucking fat ass. Doing her shit. All right, let's hop in. Let's see what she's got going on on uh, Instagram. Here's Trisha Paytas's Instagram. We like we like to catch up with her, you know, her uh, recent doings most of the time. You know, here she is. Uh, now I missed a story. It probably was nothing really different than what we see on a normal basis. Uh, here's her backup channel. She's just promoting her new video coming out. Uh, here she wow. Look at Trisha's laptop. Would you ever have thought it would be that shitty? This is her laptop. Or no, it's not. Oh my god damn it! This is it. This is the audience. This is this is the audience of Trisha Paytas. They be having I'm very shocked. Does that say MacBook? Wow. I thought that was like an Asus or uh, maybe no, it's it's probably a fucking tablet. You know what that attach attachable uh keyboard thing. No, it says Mac. What am I talking? That's a MacBook. Looking a little bit old, greasier than hell. I don't know what they got on their computer. Cause in my heart. Huh. Oh, they're they're over here reading about what are dreams. Is this what dreams are made of? Oh, maybe that's like a, an album. The Trisha Paytas album. So somebody's, you know, diminishing their mind and the you know, the quality of their hearing by <clears throat> you know, putting their self through hell by running a Trisha Paytas catalog, you know, her music, which is, this is all a scam. They just want her to post their shit. This could be a fucking hater for all she knows. And they just clowned her. Looking like we're at like a psych ward. We got these orange chair, you know, an orange chair is either prison or like, you know, some type of like, you know, unit where we have a lot of meetings and, you know, you know, a very unstable type of uh, you know, room. It looks like back here, very emotional room, these emotional oranges. And, uh, you know, DJ of the month, they got Trisha's headshot, you know, framed with, uh, you know, a nice little homemade thing they made, made out of foam or some bullshit arts and crafts supply. 
good stuff. She, you know, she doesn't get a lot of like fan interaction. And when she does, you know, it, it's, uh, she utilizes every second, especially like when it's stuff like this, when it's like some fucking kid that's probably been forced by mother, you know, cause Trisha loves to be popular with the younger crowd. Trisha Paytas is, uh, you know, getting older by the day. And she loves anytime, like, you know, somebody of the youth, which that's most of her audience on TikTok, her entire audience on TikTok are like fucking dipshit kids that don't know any better. They think this is cool. You know, if I fucking, you know, when I get on TikTok, it's either people with small arms and wheelchairs, you know, or like, you know, some fucked up police, you know, footage. Okay. Some crazy crime happening. That's, that's my algorithm. And, uh, you know, whatever. Okay. I don't know what the fuck I'm even saying, but her audience is children and she loves it whenever like, you know, kids are over here fucking posting up shit, like, you know, holding her disgusting magazine, which I'm, they're lucky they got their fingers on that thing is probably out of print the day it came out. They probably made a limited run and it was only available in LA. They're taking a big risk with having like, you know, any type of Trisha Paytas stuff in their magazine, you know, with the backlash you could get. Very risky. Food content 24-7. Now, here's her Stouffer's lasagna. Now, she might claim this is a Moses thing. This is definitely not Moses. This is frozen bullshit. You know, pro and I, I think Trisha's the type of person that doesn't know how to cook it correctly, so it's always got a block of ice in the middle. But nice and hearty, hearty for her, you know, her appetite. She needs something that will fill her up. Okay, because she loves the feeling of just feeling like she's going to explode, like some type of like, you know, fucking gusher full of lasagnas. Here's her child scared out of her mind. Uh, um, she's asking for a favor from her audience. Because as if uh, Trisha didn't make one of the worst mistakes in her life before buying an expensive bag, uh, you know, she's hoping to procure another one. She wants her audience to help her find this Gucci bag. And, uh, you know, it will definitely be used at least once for a picture and then shoved into her closet that she hides out in on her worst days. That's a uh, Wendy Williams spotting in the background. So anything for her to, you know, get closer to the one person she once executed. Okay, I don't think Trisha Paytas likes Wendy Williams. She likes the idea of being a Wendy Williams. That's her thing. That's her fetish. She could buy this on, uh, you know, easily on, on fucking, I don't know, DHgate or one of these Timu websites. Spread the word. If she gets it, we need to have a verification. I want it to be auth authenticated for sure. You know, look it up online. I, I think people should take screenshots of the actual purse. Look for everything that could indicate the real thing. And then when she shows it, make sure you get very high quality video and, you know, pictures just so we can, you know, put them side by side and make sure Trisha hasn't bought a fake. Because this can't be cheap. I mean, what the fuck is this green alligator Gucci purse? This has got to run you like $15,000. Because, you know, Trisha, you know, wastes her money in the highest degree. Green... Gucci or wait, wait, green alligator. You know, because Trisha loves the killing of an animal. Alligator Gucci bag. The one Wendy has. Here it is right here. It's the Crocodile Blondie Bowler. Let's just look at the number real quick. I'll pull it up in a second. <clears throat> it's sold. Oh, it's cheap. It's only nineteen twenty five. Waiting one second. Okay, it's uh fairly inexpensive. It's so two grand about, whatever the taxes are on that. So she's not, you know, she hasn't well, she's lost it a long time ago, but she knows a little bit better than wasting her money on shit that she doesn't need. Because it will have the least amount of use and just be for a selfie. So she's better off just borrowing it. Find a Richard out there, maybe a Tana or somebody that can let her borrow the fucking thing. And that's it. That's all you need is borrow it. You don't need to buy it. You don't need this shit. Whitney probably has, I mean, Wendy probably has no idea what's even in her hand. Wendy's lost it. 
She's lost. I think that's Wendy. I'm pretty sure it's a Wendy Williams. Slender legs. Oh, look who it is. Glum Lee, fattest of all fats of the Bry Chicken Fry duo. The podcast. This is her uh, co-star. They call her Chum Lee, Glum Lee. She's pathetic. And uh, she's supporting her queen, a.k.a. you know, fielding for likes. Because, you know, her days are numbered. She is not going to have a job much longer. I don't think, I don't know how much of a demand there is for a glum Lee. If you know what I'm talking about, we could just take a, take a look real quick. You know, it's nice to, you know, play a video to a face. Kind of educate you on who I'm talking about. I'm sure everybody knows. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm mostly the, the, the clueless, out of the dark person. I'm the person hiding in the shadows over here. Pretending to know things I don't. It's kind of no looks, and that's all. No real education. Um, here we go. Glumly. Uh, what is it? Bry. It's Plan Bry. So it's called Plan Bry Uncut. And there it is. Plan Bry podcast. And this is the girl. I started right going. Here. Mm. Okay. This is the girl that's uh promoting Trisha Paytas. She's really disgusting. Mm. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I was with the traits. Like I. Was and she's also like a man's man. She's like one of these people that like bites like the top of a beer can off, swallows it all whole, burps, you know, Oreos shooting out of her mouth. You know, she's like the, the type of girl that might eat, you know, a can of ravioli cold. Chef Boyardee. All right, let's get back. Let's get through these Instagram things. There's one more thing. There's two more on here. See what else she's posting. Oh, here we go. Here's the uh, the golf ball. This is a, actually this is. I don't know if you guys have noticed. I'm sure everybody notices this. Trisha Paytas is a big time Adam Sandler fan, and it kind of just hit me now. This is Happy Madison writing. You ever looked at Happy Madison? You know the production company, Adam Sandler's production company. Same fucking font that you would see in like any of his sports movies. And Trisha just tries to, like, you know, do everything she can to get closer to the Sandler. He wants nothing to do with her. Okay, Happy Madison Productions. And if you look at the logo, here it is right here. I mean, it's, you know, we're somewhat similar. I mean, close enough. It's just, it, it, this, this is giving me heavy, uh, yeah, it's like the same fucking thing, the same writing. Heavy golf ball vibes. All right. Moving on, moving on. Here's some chicken. You know, Trisha can't end like any of her Instagram stories without showing us, you know, her fillings for the day. Let's hop into the latest uh, episode of her show. Or not her show, but her, uh, her vlog. It's a life update. So let's see how interesting this is. She still has the green, disgusting nails. These are highlight nails. These are... Fun colors for a monster. Hey guys. I have some left. Oh no. Haven't we watched this? Oh, she's she's sitting down the whole time, dude. Fuck. Over big CD with Now, I'm only saying this because we watched her TikTok of her eating this shit. We watched her you know, we wasted our time watching her just pigging out, pigging out on more crap. So this is the long form version of it. I feel like I haven't done like a main channel video in so long, but I looked really pretty today. So I thought, well, I should. Yeah, it just hit me there. I knew it looked familiar. I knew it looked like golf ball. It looked like it just reminded me of golf ball. She's got a lot of subtle, like, you know, hints out here that, you know, I shouldn't be noticing, but I fucking do. This. <laughs> I've got Pellegrino. now. I've got leftover big CD that my husband makes. Literally so good. I've got my Nexium for heartburn. My prenatals. <laughs> what does that sound? Now it sounded like Malibu was running across the like the upstairs, screeching. <laughs> and my daughter. Did you hear? Look at you. What do you want? Some pills? Now her daughter's been known to fucking eat things that she shouldn't. She's been caught on camera having a fucking thing of toothpaste. Trisha allowed her to have toothpaste. You know, mother of the year, Trisha Paytas. The prenatals? You heard him? Get out of here, kid! Are you an orange? Orange? This is spicy. It's too hot. It's hot, hot, hot. 
Uh, Kay says, didn't, tr uh, didn't Trish say she was the longest? Oh, she was in the longest yard with Adam Sandler. I hope not. I wouldn't be shocked. There's the back of Trish's wig. Look at the back of, like, how... St uh, this is a terrible back of the head. Stubby, too. There's not a lot of knowledge. Okay, orange. Here. Good. Good. Ah. You want to go up? It's not time for bed yet. Are you drying? The hell just happened? How'd that cup move? <laughs> you want to go up? It's not time for bed yet. <laughs> oh my god, was there a ghost up in this place? Look at the cup. Malibu's over here. I guess, from the shadows, this cup moves. Good. Ah. You want to go up? It's not time for bed yet. Are you drying? Yeah. Okay, I'll come draw soon with you. Yeah, she's far away. Who moved the cup? Moses is in there with her, just so you guys. Yeah, if Moses is in there, then who's in here? Trisha, have you conjured something that you didn't realize you did with your little magic room? She's a room upstairs made for magic. You want to go up? It's not time for bed yet. Are you drying? No, there could be water under it, and it scooted, you know, the magic of water under a cup. Okay, I'll come draw soon with you. Moses is in there with her, just so you guys. So you don't think I'm just like, bye. Oh, <laughs> What do you mean? We watched you in your fucking room where you were hanging out on the floor. In every video where the kid's just running around. She doesn't care about the kid. <laughs> it's it's nothing unusual. Now's the first time ever that Trisha Paytas is like realizing letting her kid run off right towards a sharp corner is probably not a good idea to have on film. It's but we have seen plenty of times when like she looks over at the kid, the kid's got toothpaste, eating fucking goddamn... Every type of terrible ammonia, sulfate, whatever's in fucking toothpaste. And God knows what else Malibu's fucking picked up off the floor in this house. Hair? Trisha's got dry hair. It would, it would be like swallowing a, a sewing so needle. Every time I talk to the camera. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking too. But I would really, really fucking wish there was like a wider shot. Because it would be just fantastic to see like her house, a haunting happen. That's what she needs to do. If she wants to get some more viewers on this channel, we got to see like one of these Disney mugs just fly across the room. Um, but yeah, updates. I'm 32 weeks pregnant. Uh. Yeah, eat Tide Pods. I mean, any anything's in that kid's reach whenever Trish is not looking. Malibu could be like, you know, pulling a baby's day out, starting the car, driving down the fucking road. Trish has no idea she's snoozing. And her mom, Lena, you know, Lena Bobina, you know, has been known to tie on a fucking thousand drinks whenever she's around the kids. So they're like both, it's pretty much they're both not watching her ever. So Malibu's probably had to do a lot of growing up on her own because they're out of sight. They can't be bothered with raising their children. So she does. She wants to be left to gorge. Uh, JT says, I love her pulling her sleeves halfway down her hands. Hi, Pat. We know your games. Trying to hide your meat mitts. And we know, too, there's also stains and probably a bunch of disgusting scratches. I'm really craving mozzarella pretzels. And it's also like her way of being like, I'm losing weight. My clothes don't fit. Yeah, right, dude. Yeah, right. And frozen lemonade. It's like right here is probably an illusion. She painted her arm black and there's just like she cut the sleeve so she can make it go over her hand. Oldest trick in the book. So maybe I'll get that this weekend. Mm. I'm feeling good. I would love if she would just for once say she's feeling sick. I have flame on, but I'm telling you. Days where I'm not glam, I just want to be in bed. <laughs> it's not funny. And what's inside it? Every one of these noodles, full of cannoli sauce. I don't know what it is. It looked like just straight cream up yeah. in that noodle. Look at this thing. I just thing. want to be in bed. <laughs> right here, right here. I'm talking thick. It's not hollow. It's filled. Now, these could be cat the candy cow tails. They just shove it inside the center of the noodle. Throw some red sauce on it. Call it spaghetti. I pray my energy comes back after I'm 
Yeah, my baby. Because this is the lowest energy I've ever been. <laughs> it's also gloomy today. It's also late. Okay. I always have guests come at like 11 or 1. Just because, um, like one traffic, I'm kind of far out of LA, so traffic is crazy. So I have a feeling Tana's my guest today. I only would do a late podcast for Tana. I don't, I don't know what she said. What'd you say? Who's your guest? So I have a feeling Tana's my guest today. Oh, Tana. Tana's coming back. I forgot about that. Tana posted on Twitter. She asked, um, she asked people on Twitter, um, uh, what, what kind of questions she can, uh, now either Tana's coming here to do her podcast mobile or uh, she's coming back on Trisha's show to fucking, you know, make Oscar wait another week for his payment. That's how she gets out of paying Oscar, you know, consecutively. She wants him to, like, at least only get paid for three weeks out of the month. But on Twitter, Tana asks, you know, one of these bullshit fucking stupid questions where she's like, oh, what, what, what should I ask Trish? It's like, you know, we've never done a fucking podcast in our goddamn life, it seems like. You know, these people out here that are, like, famous, they're, you're, we're supposed to be asking you the questions. Stop relying on, uh, you know, your fans to do your dirty work. I'm going to click on this real quick and just... Okay, wait. Oh, nope. Okay, here it is. Let me just... Let me field these comments before I scroll through here because I, I don't know what will pop up. But I know I'm, like, close to the top. Now, I'm not sure if it's because... I'm fucking sweet or it's just because I posted on here and it's just showing my comment closer to the top because it's my comment. But on Twitter, she asked, what uh, should we talk about with Trisha? And, uh, you know, the, the audience, the doors opened up. Um, and uh, Stardust wrote something. Oh, this is a good one. Rip into JoJo because fuck her. And then ask Trisha about her hardcore drug use and then ask her how each drug makes her feel. You will be in JoJo territory within five seconds. Good stuff. And then there's ask her about her collab with The Weeknd. Trisha has that sloth eye, that, that lowered eye. This is the eye of, you know, a missing chromosome or a completely drugged out, you know, morphed human being. And even the AI, even the fucking filters have done her dirty. They made her look worse. It doesn't even look like a real face. The smoothening has made it worse. Then I asked, uh, you know... Ask her how many mozzarella sticks she can clobber in one setting. And then I posted, you know, a good picture of her. So that's just me, you know, touching my own back. I only would do a late podcast for Tana. I love her so much. And Shit. And I haven't seen her. She's here for such a short window in between her tours. I think she's going to Coachella next week. So I was like, I have to see her. I'm going to go uncanceled this weekend. So... She can only do like after five, which is like traffic time. I feel like they're going to be here like late. Um, so I'm kind of also yes, it's definitely an inbred eye. It's like uh, you, you when you grow up huffing gasoline and, you know, and you have it, you impregnate somebody or the mother's just doing whatever, you know, having sex with family members. You know, you, you, the, the chromosomes get wild and you come out looking like a hunchbackus. I like preserving my... You know, a quasi-modus. energy because I want to make sure... When she's here, like, my energy's like... Because I get so excited. I love seeing her and Paige and... Um, sometimes Amari comes or Ari or whatever. And so I'm really excited because I haven't seen her since the Madonna Inn. And I truly love Tana. Like, I love, love, love her. She's, mm -hmm. like, just so nice. Such a good... She's, like, really good energy in person. And that's far... That's for now. Because they did hate each other. They didn't talk for a long time. Trisha's over there fucking losing it right now. The cheese has got her on a different dimension, okay? She's fucking straight fluttering. Her thoughts are bubbling like the coagulated goo inside her stomach. She's really happy and positive and, like, radiant. Especially now in this era she's in, she's just really, like, on her grind. Like, she's loved. Like, she's, you know, in her unproblematic era. And I just, like, love seeing her, like, glow. Hmm. Like, it's definitely... She, did you just hear that? That's fucking so bizarre. I didn't realize. She has, like, a noise gate or a noise suppression going on. So when she swallowed, it was like, I don't know, it was like whenever you fucking are in a plane and your ears pop. Or you go underwater and you can hear nothing except for the water rushing into your eardrum. Listen to this sound real quick. I don't know if anybody can hear it like me, but it goes silent. Like the eclipse. Like, it's definitely, I've always felt that with Tana, like, wow. like, as big sister vibes, because, like, 
especially when she was like starting out and she was oh my god the fucking cop moved again there's a fucking ghost up in this bitch Latina, like like as big sister vibes because like especially when she was like starting out and she was so <laughs> it's gotta be moses you know, like all these guys are or malibu's trying to grab it she's got the kitchen knife she's trying to push it off the table being like creepy to her and like whatever i could see it and i just still never, moving I mean, like, fucker be moving. Big sister vibes because like especially when she was like starting out and she was so young and like all these guys were being like creepy to her and like whatever i could see it and i just never oh it's the goddamn mat that's what i should have known trisha's pulling the mat back and forth as she has her fucking platter of food her, on like, her cauldron of goo like that for her you know because like this is like just a sweet girl who's chill who's down and people just being so weird with her I've always felt that, like, protection. Even though we weren't close, I just always, was like, I just saw, like, a lot of me weirdly in her because I know we have, like, very different upbringings, but similar to a lot of similarities, so. Wow. I mean, they're, they're twins. Her childhood was rough. Same people. You know, mine, was, mine was not in comparison, you know what I mean? Like, I, I really feel for her, but... Then what's the fucking comparison? What do you see in her that you see in yourself? You haven't explained. The food has got her freaking the fuck out, okay? She's just talking to talk. Which I understand, like, you know, a fucking filler word or two. Or like, when you do these videos so much, you'd think you'd, like... She always distracts herself, too. It's, like, the hardest thing to do if I was, like, you know, putting down a fucking ham sandwich or... You know, eating the f most filling food ever, rancid uh, ragatouli noodle. I don't know what the fuck. I I'm just assuming that's a noodle of some sorts. I can't tell from the mold. But, you know, you would think like, you know, you wouldn't want to do this for these type of like life update videos. You're you're distracted at the, at the highest degree. There's you're devouring. Similarities in crunch. Oh my god, if you guys haven't heard, another life update. I just signed with an agency. Oh, CAA. I signed with CAA, which a lot of people were like so excited. And some people were like, what is CAA? Crime agency agency. And I totally get. I really should warm this up a little bit. Dude, double hit her, bro. She just dunked it twice in her mouth, not even swallowing. Spread the word. It was CAA, which a lot of people were like so excited. And some people were like, what is CAA? And I totally get. I really should warm this up a little bit. I'm going to warm this up a little. Mm -hmm. It's hot, 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 and the wind is picking up, so it's steaming again. The wind? Um. They're fucking draft in this house? But yeah, CAA is like one of the top three. I would say it's like the top, but definitely considered top three agencies in Hollywood. Like, even since I came to Hollywood like 17 years ago, my dream was to sign with an agency, like a big reputable one because there's a lot of smaller ones they'll just like take advantage or they don't they waste your time in like a year contract well time to wash the table hasn't been washed ever so there's for sure like uh smallpox on this table and they waste oh cool look at her just eating not one drop wasted they take advantage or they don't they waste your time Wait, I, I gotta oh i thought she did that no she did her our hands are so fat she just destroyed this, almost broke the fucking, you know, the bowl. R.I.P. Watch her eat this little bit like off the table. Contract. And they waste your time or whatever. God damn. Um, so. Not I was drop very wasted. happy, surprised, shocked, all of the above. It's nice to have Dylan back. I haven't seen Dylan in so long. Dylan says, Trisha looking spicy. Mm, mm, mm. When I got an email from CAA and I checked my got that cotton can. This is the this is her Megan Fox look right so now. It was from them, like at CAA, um, signed pretty quickly. They're pretty picky on who they sign, but they can help you just with like a lot of things. Like if I want to be on TV, if I want my own show, if I want to do children's books, like just all the dreams I've ever had. Broadway, like they can at least help me get maybe opportunities or. Some uh, Cody says she's over here taking recognition for Tana's renaissance, which Tana has never really fallen off. I, I think Tana's always been a you know a hype thing. I, then she she just stopped doing YouTube for a while to be doing jacking off content. I think Tana does OnlyFans. She's not hurting at all for cash. You know, if anything, Trisha's begging her. You know, for the relevancy, it it helps. Trisha's trying to get close to another big uh, influencer to 
exposed for a crime so she can be famous again. Be seen for things? Which she is. I mean, Trisha will never not be a big fat fucking star in the eyes of stupids. I mean, I, you know, for years I never knew who she was, but I'd seen her before. I'd seen this wide cr a crotcher, okay? I like to call her a crotcher. You know, all over fucking, you know, any damn thumbnail on YouTube. You know, you can't escape this type of monster. But she'll never lose her, you know, her, you know, her relevancy as being somebody of something in YouTube's existence. But she definitely isn't like, you know, somebody's over here making Tana, you know, more famous. Tana's over here destroying her in numbers. Straight. Done. I mean, I'm talking like doing straight half court shots while Trisha's back there. Hasn't even left the bleacher yet. Tana has her outnumbered. Something happen, like just for TV and just talking to like writers and stuff like that, like stuff that I've never been able to like ever get in. Like, and that's all I ever wanted. It's like oh, here, so I'm really excited. They're the biggest, so I feel like you know, if they can't help me, at least I feel like I've tried all my options. <laughs> And I went with the biggest and gave it my best, you know? Danny Osmond on the cover of Las Vegas. Wow, what a terrible magazine. I've never heard of Lava... Oh, I was about to say... I was about to go French with it. Las Vegas! I was about to say Lava Agas. Because I thought it was like, you know, an artsy... Mag no, it says Las Vegas. I pulled a uh, Christmas story right there. A Fragile. Right um, ah. So... Never a guarantee of what can be done, but like I said, already they've done so much for me. And I'm just really lucky and thankful. And it's crazy that I'm 36 and like this is the time that I'm getting like magazines and beauty campaigns and agencies. Like it's really like never too late. Like, and I always thought I would be like a late bloomer. What are you talking about? Like Trisha, the, she, she sees herself like being like, like statues being made of her. Like, even then, it's it's that's not the fame she thinks she deserves she has or should get the recognition she wants. Like she wants to be like uh, like next to like the presidents on, you know, Mount Rushmore. You know, she thinks that, uh, you know, right now she's telling us she's like, maybe I'm just a late bloomer. I mean, what else? You, 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 a lot of these fucking people think like television is what it used to be. I mean... <laughs> You look at, like, her podcast or any of these, you know, you go to throw a fucking YouTube thing. Like, anything that has, like, even this canceled thing right here we watched the other day. 612,000K. For this podcast, this is, you know, probably, I, I would imagine Tana's probably getting, you know, getting a cut of this. It's, she probably doesn't even own her own podcast channel. And if she does, she probably does have to pay some sort of fee for them to promote and do whatever backwoods bullshit they do to make her, you know, still hype. You know, I can't judge, I can't really, you know, trust that all those numbers are real. But 600K12 is like more numbers than like a television show gets. TV's not as like, you know, people are are not are canceling their cable subscription, just paying for their internet. YouTube is the new way of like famedom. Besides being like, you know, in a Marvel movie or being in the movies. Half of these fucking movies come out like, you know, aren't making in box office what some of these fucking YouTube people or these influencers make a year. So Trisha's like got this delusion. She's that's how you know Trisha's old as hell. She's like a boomer. She thinks that like being uh, you know, like in a movie or on a TV show is you know, the, what what she should aspire towards. You you have a better shot doing this crap. Nobody's going to remember you for being, you know, quitting your YouTube. Because that's what will happen. She'll quit YouTube. She'll stop doing everything she does just to be in a fucking TV show. Some shitty ass reality show or, uh, because that's all she has. She's not going to get an acting job. She's not going to land a job doing, re reading lines. And if she does, it'll be like a fucking Tim and Eric special or something. They're not going to take you seriously. You're too stupid. And then you'll come back after you get fired from your fucking Always job. Of a Terry Hatcher. You know, for freaking out on set. Her breakup. And guess what? Nobody watches you. Or Nicolette Sheridan. Or like, you know, people who hit their stride. Like Oprah at like 40. Or Lucille Ball at like 39. In their later 30s, 40s. And I always felt that with me for some reason. I always like thought that. And like, it just feels right. Because everything feels stable. I have such a good 
mental stability. I have good home stability, financial stability, where it's like, I don't need to book a job. You know what I mean? Uh, but when I was younger, I was very mentally unstable. I was very desperate for money. I needed to book anything and everything. Um, I didn't have like support around me. And now it's just like such a different time in my life. And like, this is all happening now. And I feel really happy. <laughs> No, she's feeling tired. That's why she's trying to get like, she's tr trying so hard to get like a break. She doesn't want to do this YouTube shit anymore. She's getting very exhausted. Even though she does nothing but eat on camera, she thinks the easier route is to stop doing YouTube and like start getting like roles, okay? Like being in commercials and doing whatever. Because she does have the addiction like a lot of these people do. You know, there's an addiction of the like number, there's an addiction of the views, and the cash, the biggest of all evil. Her evil is, is money, the greed. And maybe it's true. Maybe maybe acting in a fucking TV show will pay better, which that just goes to show. She used to make cash. She used to make bank. She's lost her money. And right now, she's, like, probably paying into this advertise this, this CAA. They're probably fucking, you know, collecting a check from her. You know, just to like put her out there, you know, in hopes that somebody's going to bite on the reel. No way. Get used to YouTube. This is it. This is the end of the road, Trish. Good morning, son. Boom. And it's all because of you guys. I've always said this. I've always been so thankful and grateful for her. You know, you would think that she's not, though. You know, after I, this, this, this is the look. This is the look of what she really thinks of her fans. This type of demonic. Whoa. What the hell? This is the... Get out of there, weather! Fuck! I lost it! Whatever. Same look. Same slender, slither eyes. These snarky eyes. Petty, petty eyes. She doesn't give a fuck about her fans. We've seen her in drive through She can't get away from, like, just a random bystander in general. Imagine, like, you know, like, her being around people that are obsessed with her. Or they, they think they like her. She knows better. They're gonna start smelling smells. They're going to get freaked out. They're going to be like, oh, hell no. And then the word spreads. She doesn't like her fucking fans. If you like your fans, you wouldn't be selling them fucking cheap stickers and, and you know, throwaway laminated pictures of yourself, your headshots for like a $50 a month tier, $100 a month tier thing on Patreon. That, that's, a slap in the, that's a slap in your fans' face. You're grifting. You're stealing their cash for like the most fucking pathetic... You know, thing in return. Any opportunity I've ever gotten has been because of you guys. So, and I mean that now more than ever. Yeah, Room says she needs people's ten dollars to to retile or what is it? What is it? Is that retile? I can't. Uh, yeah, retile her sewage. Yeah, she's. I have been given. She's got a problem with leaky pipes in her house. So grace. Second, third, fourth, fifth chances. Um, it's really helped me as a person for real, for real, for real. It took a while, right, to get it in my head, but I can take in criticism now. I can take in like, okay, if something is a hot take or something's make me like I'm looking at things like a, you know, in the wrong way. And like at 35 now, I feel like I've grown a lot. Um, I'm gonna be 36 soon. <sighs> I'll take my prenatal. Um, oh, okay, so how many are we? Uh, this is where you know what we're gonna see the dosage. Um, how many? Oh, you just put it back in there. Were you pretending, showing us that you can eat a pill? <laughs> what the fuck is the mouth lick? She does the mouth lick whenever you know she did, you know made a mistake. What's the what's what does it matter? Does it matter which one you eat first? You're gonna put them down your throat. Iron first, maybe. Iron first, though. That affects me more. Um. Yes. So. Yeah, get away, kid. All right, you know she screeched. That's why it's such a cut. Because she quickly threw a cup at Malibu. That's why I'm mad. I'm feeling just very grateful and, like, really thankful for you guys. Like, truly. And, like I said, even. And Cody says, you are not in the moment. You are not the hot tea, sweetie. Sit down. Shut up and eat. Before and she's I definitely delusional. Or just getting opportunities again. Um. Uh, Room says she's running out of starfish pictures. Um, I'm feeling like she's 
at Olive Garden. The pasta is never ending. I know there might be a hole in the table where Moses is under there pushing more za. I up. really was just trying to change because I hit so many rock bottoms, and especially 2021 was like a really, really hard year for me. 2019 was. Uh, Anna says Moses, uh, his mom is back in town. Will TP allow her to come around? You know she's around for the Ethan, the Klein's birth. You know Ethan Klein, uh, his wife Hila. Uh, Moses's sister just had her baby. So they're in town. And Trisha hasn't been posting shit. This is old. We watched this on fucking Friday. So no telling how old this, this video is. What's her, uh, let's go to her last, um, her Trishy Paytas, um, podcast and see what color of hair she had. Cause what, what did she look like? Yeah, this is it. Six days ago. And this probably was fucking filmed six days before this. So this is old material. This is all the morning of this podcast. And Ethan, you know, the baby thing happened and uh, his parents are in town. So Trisha hasn't been posting shit. Like, I, I wouldn't be shocked if we're going to have like one of these like disgusting recycled. Because uh, she has these podcasts. I think she does a lot of um, podcasting. Uh, on the, What am I fucking saying? I can't even think right now. She does a lot of extra podcast that she just puts in storage we've seen it done before where it's like some nobody guest and then she probably had second thoughts about it and was like we'll just hold on to this let's go ahead and record something else with some other star she's rascaled into her basement so that might be coming out tomorrow whenever the next podcast comes out wouldn't be shocked but uh trisha's probably in hiding right now she's going through a mental breakdown Maybe it's it's showing in her tweets. I didn't even look at her tweets. You know, she does show her true colors and, like, her mental status in a lot of her tweets. And she's definitely not going to be doing any vlogging when Mother's in town. And if she does, we've seen it happen before when she was acting real strange. Remember that one week that I thought the, I thought the family was divorced? I don't know if you guys remember. There was a week when, like, Trisha was whispering, doing a lot of really, really strange, like, facial contortions and uh, behaviors and acting very, very distraught. I thought that, you know, maybe she got caught cheating on Moses with the camera guy. Okay. All right, and uh, that would have been fantastic news because we know it's coming. And if it hasn't already happened. Well, we've seen it. It was last year or maybe Christmas, whatever. And it was all because, I remember you guys saying, Moses' family was in town. They were upstairs. They probably don't like the idea of Trisha Paytas filming the whole, everything going on in the house. They're, they don't play that tomfoolery. They're probably like, enough! Give it up! Stop with the fucking filming for one week when we're in town. And they're probably also salty because she doesn't want to go up there and help with the kid. So Trisha's hiding down there like some type of fucking, you know, haunted rat that like comes out at night looking around for crumbs. Really horrible. 2021 was like, at least I had Moses with me, but online, like really bad. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for Trisha's spiral. Just hate and... You know, look, look, right now she wants to scream. Malibu's back there doing her ABCs or something. Trisha's like, shut up! Fucking shut up, kid! I've had enough. She's gonna turn around like, you're mine! Warranted, some not warranted, didn't matter. And shoot. I was like, I need to change me, my outlook on life, my outlook on myself, my relationship with social media and comments and stuff like that. Like, I was like, at comments way too much. Taking. Now it's like, has such a ba good balance, like healthy balance with social media. Yeah, and, she does. She does look like Ursula. And, um, I don't know. Just like I really, it took it took a rock bottom to get through my spirituality, and so yeah. And then twenty twenty two, I really took like a year of just being not really by choice of taking a year off. It was a struggle, but just really tapping into like spirituality and meditation and calmness and just being at peace with where I am at. I just always wanted more, more, more. I shouldn't be doing more. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And it's like, even now with the agency, like, I'm super happy and I can't wait to take every opportunity possible. Cody said, what happened to that heavy ass five below blinged out cup? Probably trash. I've never seen Trisha with such a normal cup too. And it makes me think like we haven't done our dishes. You know, I don't, I think they're, I, do they have a dishwasher? And if they do, is it clogged? They wouldn't know. Like Moses is like, it's broken. 
rip it out. He wouldn't know to fucking clean out the filter. Or if anything's clogged out there, he wouldn't know. You'd pull out the fucking thing at the bottom and scrape it off. But I'm also just content doing my podcast. Being uh, And Rainbow says you can see the disgust in her eyes where the kid yelled. I know. Because she went, her hands went up with it. Like, you know, that, um, that uh, almost like, you know, instant rage. Like, uh, what do they call that? Um, short temper freaking out she wanted to fucking yell and hit the ground hit the you know remember when hercules hit the fucking the floor in the coliseum crack that shit around because of zeus my family and being a full-on bitch like we went to breakfast this morning all together as family and it's like we're getting ice cream like i'm truly happy in those moments just as happy as i am when i make music videos or i'm on a tv show or anything that i get like a rush from normally and i'm just as content be getting ice cream with my family as I am doing all those crazy things. So there's never those highs and lows. It's all, I'm pretty happy doing whatever. If I'm with my family, I'm happy. That's where I'm meant to be. If I'm working, that's where I'm meant to be. Crunch. And it's a good place to be. <laughs> well, that's, you know, there's not psychosis going on right there. I mean, you see it all, the, the, comp the switch. She did the fake laugh, the fake smile, then complete, no, her emotions just blank. And that's a good place to be. <laughs> and then just nothing. Maybe she's choking or something. That would have been great. You know, you're going to need a, one of them plastic grabber things to pull out all the shit she has just lined up down her throat. So, be sick. Wow. Cool. That's it. <laughs> That's fucking it. Oh, no. This is when we stop the video. Now we're just going to be really seeming odd. It's like the best space I've ever been in. And it's only gotten better literally since the birth of my daughter. Like when I got pregnant, I was in such a good space. It was, I didn't find out to January 2022, but I got pregnant at the end of 2021. Three months after my spiritual journey, my contentment, my finances. What does that even fucking mean? We still haven't figured that out. All we saw was her upstairs room that Moses made. He put a bunch of fucking pillows that Trisha could have all under her ass at once. Not enough pillows for a circle of pillows. It's just for her to sit in the center. She had this manifestation room. What is this spiritual journey she's gone on? I got pregnant at the end of 2021. Three months after my spiritual journey, my contentment, my finding like inner peace and her happiness. I got pregnant and then that year was really beautiful and I was so excited to be a mom. And like, and this is, these are like milestones she's created. I'm sure if somebody was to go back, a, a Trish, Trisha Paytas historian would uh, you know, like to look at these dates on here and, and kind of see like, you know, how, how much she stuck on that journey or where that journey even came from. I don't even know if I was watching Trisha at that point to even fucking know, but I know it's bullshit. Um, like, she always, like, just says something, but there's not really an explanation. She just stares off into fucking, you know, the the X zone or some shit. You know, like, it, it just saying these type of things. I need explanation. I need fucking pictures. I need evidence. I need to know what that even means. And, you know, the following your 23 is like, God, you know. The like, Harry Karishna. I forgot. She went and sat on a swing somewhere. Not, like, that was supposed to be, you know, YouTube wasn't really. And, and on war, like, uh, you know, and. The Star of David. Like, that, was that was her spiritual door, or almost said doorway, her spiritual journey. Elvis is in the doorway. Could not be. Not the bills. People like weren't watching. I was still doing it because I like it, but um, I didn't know, you know. And I tried everything. <laughs> ASMR, my Trish Talks videos, which was like Dharma videos. Um, they had a podcast that failed <laughs> miserably, and we put so much like money into it, even though like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, bullshit, all right? You sold off all your stocks with that. You bought out uh, Colleen. Colleen was bought out for that channel. We really didn't have that money at the time. Failed. Which, like, I don't think there was any money. What did you fucking spend? You're using everything you use for that show for this Maybe one. She made a flimsy background with fucking, you know, shimmering, like, you know, reflective pink fucking plastic. That like, you know, every time Trisha shifted in the room, the whole fucking thing shook like there was a goddamn typhoon coming. There wasn't a lot of money put into that. You know what? What she spent money on was all the fucking merch that was never going to be sold. That show sucked. They all suck. But Trisha gets, and these are like things that she did herself. 
And so like she creates her own nightmares. So a lot of this stuff is should just be like Moses should be sitting over there like, I told you so, bitch. Come in for your lickings with the belt. In Minecraft. And we put so much like money into it, even though like we But like it worked out for her. That was the best thing that could have happened for Trisha Paytas. And she wants to sit here and be like, Oh, I didn't monetize off that. That was your last year, best year. You had the video or you were crying because you were called fat as fuck. And, and you, uh, you know, you still haven't talked to Adam McIntyre. I doubt it. The kid kind of puts you on the map also. If it wasn't for Adam McIntyre, really you'd be finished. Money. He's kind of like, you know, it was like a, a, a fucking nail on the wood of your path to fucking, you know, help you kind of like get some relevancy time, again. Failed miserably, so we tried a second one where we put money into it. That's just Trish, and it worked. <laughs> I'm still shocked to this day how many people like it and watch it and how many opportunities I got because of it. Yeah, we should probably, you know, chew our food before we talk. And how many opportunities I got because of it. I don't know. I I'm assuming that's traction. She's a like, Look at this cool look. How much more are these videos until people kind of relate that to the podcast and be like, yeah, yeah, this sucks. It's like I can smell her breath. So, I'm just really, really... And her fucking vlog shit fell off. That was going nowhere. The the mommy content. She wants to sit there and be like, oh, motherhood was the best thing that ever happened to me. I, you know, I've, I've been on a, you know, an upward spiral ever since. Yeah, right. Grateful. I'm really you were shitty before... Shitty when you had the kid, and shitty when you're having the new I'm happy. one. I'm really like, you don't look happy. You're fucking pit. You haven't got on one, I don't know, uh, a walk. Happy people, I'm not going to lie. Like, trust me, man. I used to be a big fat. F I was 500 pounds. I was a big fatty. I was fat as fuck. Big old jockers. Big jockers. And uh, you can't be happy if, like, you know, you're poisoning yourself with overeating. Like, you know, some people have a hard time with their mental status in their head. They got mental problems, whatever. But there's a way out. Like, you don't have to just fucking give up and sit down and chow through fucking bowls of, you know, lasagna. And, like, every video be eating and eating. You have to be feeling terrible on the inside. She keeps, like, grasping for these outside sources, like, getting pregnant again, doing this, doing that, instead of being, like, solely content in her own head. Sometimes. And that's poison. You know, I sit here, I'm fucking grabbing for a cigarette. If I didn't have a cigarette, I'd kill. But, same time, it's like, if you should be this big, you have to be feeling shitty. You know, you're staring down, like, when you're saying you're content, you're happy, while your eyes are lowered... Looking down into bowl of cheese noodles. Can't be really that happy. And I book Broadway and my own TV show. I would be just as happy as being here. Also, you want to be on the internet. Like, being famous is a sickness itself. Like, me doing this fucking stream shows a chink in my armor. Whoa. joke joke but it's uh, it's showing that uh you know there's a weakness in me where i'm over i want to i want to be liked okay i'm not completely not truly happy people are out here like wanting to be on camera and on the internet like there's you, you want something you want eyes on you want to be cool all right like you know we have talents out here you could be a writer you could be a fucking i don't know a fucking x games master you could do whatever be a fighter or whatever these like you know these platforms of uh you know for other eyes to look at there is like a there is a sickness to want to be in front of people and display yourself for other eyes and other acknowledgement and that you could say that's a sickness itself you know it doesn't matter like I so you know trish has got a lot of different like ailing factors that are deeply troubling her you know at her age eating like this which you know is normal for a lot of people and at her age to like want to be cool with younger people, do podcasts, have the numbers, relevancy, cash. And wanting cash as much as she wants, you know, is a problem itself too. Love my life. What do you fucking need all that money for? So even that. Like, what are you going to buy? You're unhappy. If it happens, I'll be really happy. If it doesn't the happen, fuck I'll... you going to do with the almighty evil dollar? 
be really happy and I'm just I'm just really good and I have you guys again I mean I feel like I'm friends with Donny Osmond at this point you know <laughs> the Donny Joseph sing along see right through this shirt what is that Gildan at this point you know <laughs> The Donnie Joseph sing Right there, right there. Oh, you can see right there. Um, that ain't gonna fit. Just have good people around and good things. And yeah, I think you really just gotta be happy with yourself. And then other things come along. Things that are meant for you will be for you. Things that aren't in past. I was actually considered for a TV show that's filming right now. And I was like really close. And they're like, what's your, like, we're gonna send you an offer. And then I kind of just didn't hear anything. And they're like, well, we sent out offers to other people. And it's just wait, like, wait, 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 what? What are we talking about? I just missed something. Right now. And I was like really close. And they're like, what's actually Fuck, considered? Fuck, God damn it. Company. Sorry. Things that are meant for you will be for you. Things that aren't in past. I was actually considered for a TV show that's filming right now. And I was like really close. And they're like, what's your, like, we're going to send you an offer. Oh, and then Trisha fucking fucked it up asking for more than she, they could bargain for. They're like, yeah, right. Are you fucking a smoking Elmer's glue? And then they kind of just didn't hear anything. And they're like, well, we sent out offers to other people and it's just on pause and it just didn't work out. Oh, God. I want to know what that fucking show was. It had to have been a fucking uh, reality show. And they should go back. We need, a, we need a Trisha Paytas reality show. Like, I love watching the Kardashians just for a hate watch, and I just sit there and I do my own commentary in my head while I'm looking at the babes. Now, it'll be a different fucking reality with Trish. Right? We can finally see her fat as fuck on their other people's cameras. They're not going to fucking skimp out. We've seen TLC, how they do fat shows. They always film in the worst light. That gets audiences. They're like, holy shit, who's this big bitch? Because there will be people that have no idea who she is. But, like, I always just know whatever's, like, meant. But I wish I knew what she, like, you know, had, you know, what kind of eggs she had going and, you know, whatever thing that she tried to uh, sell to a production to company. Be, for me, will be mine, and it doesn't matter. And Jenna says, of course it didn't work out. She's so surprised she got signed. Baby, move you. So. All right. And this is her cope eating. It comes and goes. Yep. Good stuff. I'm telling you, love is all you need. Because in 2021, even when I was going through it online, having Moses and like just that love we have for each other and that like partner who's like ride or die, I was like, this is everything I wanted. Is it? Is it everything? Usually, when you say that, you don't go fucking even harder to find bigger and better things. Stick with your YouTube shit. I mean, what is the obsession with? You know, wanting to be so public. She can't even handle a fucking... Remember the Reddit? The Reddit was gunned down. Couldn't handle that. Like, imagine she's on fucking TV. E! Entertainment's fucking zooming in on her fucking, you know, eating at, like, you know, every restaurant she goes. The paparazzi can't fucking keep their cameras off fucking taking pictures of her with... You know, clobbering down cheese poofs like in a in an aisle at Walmart when she thinks nobody's watching. I needed, and everything was gonna be okay. Twenty twenty three too. Went through some. Uh, Rainbow says, "How old?" She says, "She's thirty five. It's a wrap. It is. It's over. It, this is. You should have got famous earlier. Like I don't know how old John. And I know Rodney Dangerfield was an old mattress salesman, but." He falls in lines with the freaks that have been given a door into Hollywood. There's only so much room for people that are old and gross and strange looking to have a spot in Hollywood. They've got it filled up. Financial She's going to have to shoot, you know, in Minecraft, Paul Giamatti or somebody to make room. Melissa Jones. No, that's she's not fat. Who's the lady off of a... Uh, the baby movie, not the baby movie, the wedding, wedding singer, not the, what the fuck, um, bridesmaids, the big lady. I had love and we were so happy still and it just like made sure everything was okay. I guess there were stressful times, but everything was going to be okay, you know? Um, uh, Kay said off topic, but this channel called E-Rose just bought some used sandals from Trisha and the video is so strange. Oh man. 
we have to watch that. I need, I can't watch it tonight. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to, you know, I need something for another day because we might have, you know, some ter- terrible. Yeah, I know. Rodney was talent. Rodney was talented, one of the greats, and also terrifying in uh, Natural Born Killers. He was a true, he's just one of those people you could see being the pedophile father. He was in Natural Born Killers. Yeah, Melissa McCartney, Melissa McCartney, a lot lot of carbs. But we're going to have to save that. I need to remember that. We're going to watch that for sure. So now 2024, just the year of the dragon. (laughs) That sounds great, man. I want to watch it tonight, but I can't waste it. Which R.I.P. Rodney Dangerfield, he was in Back to School. Remember that movie? He was the creep in college. Mm-hmm, his like, son. It's like what uh, Goofy movie stole its idea from. Goofy movie too. So excited about everything that's to come. It's raining now. I'm looking kind of sunny. Too gloomy. Too really windy. And I was like, oh, pouring rain. Crazy. Okay, yeah, that's a little life update for me. Stuff, so much exciting stuff happening. Okay, I, I can't. All right, I'm done. All right, guys. Sorry to end it so abruptly. I just... I can't watch any more of this. Thanks for being here, guys. Um, You know, thanks for the crew tonight. We had, you know, I think we had like 34 people in the chat. Um, I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the donations, okay? You know, it's means a lot whenever people throw some money out there it's that's a glorious thing and you know it's never mandatory but it's definitely fucking thank you okay it's definitely accepted and uh you guys you know you guys are too awesome thanks for being here guys have a lovely night um we shall be shall be back either wednesday or thursday one of the two and probably on a friday or something Yes, thank you. I'll be 31 tomorrow. Old man. But I love you all, and I shall see you in the next one.